I'm here with the must-have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll like in Style Finder. I'm Shop All Day contributor Makon Jovu, and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media in influencer trends. And I'm lifestyle expert and founder of PSI Made This, Erica Damasek. I'm here with products and projects you can buy to DIY. And the best part is anyone can do it. This is Shop All Day, Fall Harvest. Hi, I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and we're back today with another episode of Shop All Day. And today we are bringing you all things fall to get you in the autumn mood. Think apple picking, tailgates, and cooler weather with even cooler style. From knit sets that are machine washable, yes, knit is a big trend you'll be seeing, to a midi dress that screams fall for under $35. And we don't just stop at fashion. We have accessories too, from jewelry trims to fall footwear, not to mention sweet treats you can make yourself with the apples you pick. And remember, see that QR code at the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. So let's get to it. First, let's talk about a big trend for fall, all things knit. I fell in love with this cozy knit sweater and lounge pants set from The Drop, which is Amazon's fashion forward private label. And I'm a huge fan of sets in general because they're fashion no-brainers. I mean, you can wear them together and look instantly pulled together or split them up and mix them in with your entire wardrobe. So first, let's talk about the sweater. It is a super plush and soft crew neck pullover style. I mean, check out these bell sleeves and it even has a slit back vent. And I love this cuddle chic rib texture. It's got a loose silhouette that also makes a fab layering piece. And I also like the length. I mean, it hits just below the hip, which is really flattering. Wear it with your leggings, jeans, skirts, truly anything, or go for the set like I did and pair with the matching knit pants, which I must say, are among the most comfortable I've worn in a long time. Now onto one of my ultimate fall go-tos, the midi dress. When in doubt, I reach for a great midi again and again. It never lets me down. In fact, I have a few that I keep in constant rotation. So I am thrilled to share with you this incredibly stylish and affordable find in my favorite print ever, leopard. Look how fantastic this midi is. It's got a great wrap style top with a little snap to make sure that it keeps closed and an elastic waistband, thank you very much. And a super flattering tiered A-line silhouette. And of course, that perfect midi length. And how about these two autumnal takes on the leopard print? You can choose between these little fabulous tiny micro leopard print and a larger leopard spot print. I'll take them both. And this is another closet essential that will take you absolutely everywhere. Wear with tall boots or booties or dress down with sneakers or flats. Next, I am a huge fan of this multitasker, the turtleneck bodysuit. Can't you tell? <laughs> and I'm not alone. It's a bestseller with over 35 thousand ratings and for good reason. You can pair it with virtually everything in your closet. Now, here's what makes this one so great. It's like an elevated take on the classic turtleneck. It gives a smooth line, no constant tucking your shirt in all the time, which I love. I find it to be such an easy to wear cut. And I am also a big fan of this you know, really easy stretch fabric. And when I say it's versatile, I'm not kidding. Wear it with absolutely everything. Jeans, a cute pleated midi skirt, trousers, and it's also perfect for layering. And you can choose from sizes extra small to XXL. Now for the ultimate fall accessory that just screams fall vibes. The wide brim cowboy hat, I mean, 
How great would this hat look with our midi dress, by the way, or pretty much everything we've got with us today? You'll see this hat all over social media as the must-have instant outfit maker. And these amazing takes are from Forever 21 and they're under $20, but I think they look so much more expensive. And they're made with this really nice felt like material and they've got an elongated brim and that is what is so key to the trend and they've also got this great dimpled crown and it's sort of dimpled here on the sides that gives it that great western cowboy feel that's so hot this season and they're finished with a really pretty velvet ribbon can you see that i think that's so so great and you can choose from eight different colors and lastly, a bucket bag, which is having quite the moment this fall. Yes, we got another high style, low price fall accessory that you're gonna wanna add to your cart ASAP. So meet Bifo Leather Bucket Tote. And can you believe that this bag is under $30? I mean, I love the way the silhouette looks, but I also love how much room this style affords. I mean, look, there's plenty of space for everything you need to carry. Of course, your wallet and essentials, but also it fits your laptop, notebooks, water bottle, gym clothes, and more. And I love this thicker width strap with the silver and gold slide bolt hardware. It's really got this equestrian vibe. And how great, honestly, does this look on the shoulder? It's kind of like the perfect length. And it also comes, check this out, with a matching smaller pouch that you can use for organizing or you can wear it as a crossbody. I mean, it comes with its own thin strap, which you can also use with the tote. You can see here, we switched out the strap from the thicker one to the thinner one. And I also like this outsize pocket detail, right? And the color selection in all the fall classics. And though this bag is absolutely fabulous for fall, the bag also works year round. So let's run through all the products one more time. We've got the knit sweater and pants set, the fall midi dress, the mock turtleneck bodysuit, the Forever 21 cowboy hat, and the leather bucket tote. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. That's it for Style Finder. Up next, McCoe and Lovu is talking to star jewelry designer, Stephanie Gottlieb. She'll show us her fall favorites from her signature hoops to affordable fall footwear. And later, Erica Domasek shows us how to make caramel apples with the bounty that you pick. So stay with us. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. Allie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe.
Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. fans ready to unlock our true crime mysteries try dateline premium on apple podcasts you'll get early access to originals plus bonus content and everything is ad free so head to apple podcast now to subscribe hi there welcome back i'm makon dovu and this is influencer trends where i'll be talking to industry insiders and they'll share their favorite products and the must-have items to shop for right now and don't forget the QR code on the corner of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products. Stephanie Gottlieb has her own fine jewelry line, including rings, necklaces, and more. Plus, you might have seen her statement hoops brightening up social media. We're so excited to chat with her. Hi, Stephanie. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so excited that you're here. Let's take a step back. Let's talk about your background. How did you get started designing jewelry? Did you always know that you wanted to make a career out of it? So I have always loved jewelry and accessories in general, but this is not necessarily where I saw myself ending up. When I graduated from college, I took an internship at a diamond company and I ended up staying at that company for five years. And then I just wanted to try something on my own. And so I did. And now almost 10 years later, this baby has turned into something so different than I ever imagined it would be, but it's been such an incredible journey. I love the way you connect with your following on social media. You have a very engaged audience. If you were to give advice to anyone who wants to have that sort of same kind of relationship with their audience, what would you say to them? I think it's so much about building community and being able to offer something to your audience. So is there advice or education that you can provide so that they feel like they're really getting something out of that relationship with you? Yeah, education. But also, I feel like we get insight into your personal life as well on social media. Your babies, toddlers are so cute, right? What have they taught you about just being an entrepreneur and how have they changed the way you approach and design jewelry as well? Having children is a huge lesson in patience and that that helps in all areas of life as you grow a team and learning to manage people. As I design, I'm definitely keeping in mind like, is my son going to be able to pull this off my neck? Is my daughter <laughs> gonna yank this out of my ear? Those are considerations. I want the jewelry to be able to be worn and loved. And so you do have to think about the practicality of things too. I, I love that practical, but still fashionable at the same time. Let's get into some top trends for fall. What can we expect in the jewelry department for fall? Okay, so obviously we've seen Y2K has been a huge part of the fashion trend throughout the year. I think that's going to continue. Lots of colors and throwbacks with butterflies a lot of chunky chains um, and going into fall i see you know some more muted color in particular we have designed some of our best sellers with some more fall tones so our electric hoop which i'm wearing yeah let's get into the product selections that you have and that was a beautiful segue let's talk about this electric hoop absolutely stunning so is this for everyday wear or are these pieces for like special occasions these are totally for everyday wear. And I think most of the jewelry that I design is intended to be worn as much as you possibly can. And that's even something I do with sort of the dressier pieces. This is actually titanium. Wow. Um, and it, it's finished with an anodized finish. So that's what gives it its fun color. So we have a whole spectrum of colors. And for fall, we're introducing this really fun, like caramel copper color. And I also love how lightweight it feels as well. It really is incredible. Let's move on and talk about the enamel box hoops as well. So when it comes to color, Stephanie, I'd love to hear your insight. Since these do have colors, should we do a whole monochromatic sort of look? Should we mix and match colors? Lead us, show us the way. Jewelry is the perfect place for you to pop a little bit of color. So 
you know, throw on a red hoop with whatever, you know, more basic outfit you're wearing. If it's a black long sleeve t-shirt or a white sweater with denim, that's what I like to do with jewelry is let that be the shining star of your everyday dressing. That's such a good tip. I, I love that. Let's talk about accessories as well. This is a really clever product. Is this for working out? How do I rock this, Stephanie? Okay, so this is the arm candy band. We designed this with the intention of putting your engagement ring inside when you are exercising, getting your nails done. And that is something that we tell our brides is take that ring off whenever you can, but at least now you have a safe place to put it. So I keep one of these in every purse that I own. And that way, if I ever need a safe place to stick my ring or even my diamond studs, I've got that here. It has this little zipper, keep it on your wrist um, and you don't have to worry. You know what? I know a bride to be, and this is going to be her gift. That's such a brilliant idea. Speaking of brilliant, this red nail polish, Essie, is one of my favorites. Is it matte? Is it shiny? Let's talk about it. OK, this is not ready for bed. It lasts the longest. This is a matte finish. This, to me, is just like the quintessential fall red color. Ah, it's such a beautiful color. I can just imagine when you're getting your pumpkin spice latte, you have your red nail polish. It's a whole situation. Let's move on to the bobble bar iPhone case. Are these customizable or are the names sort of preset? Yes, these are entirely customizable. And that is something we do with our jewelry too. Anything that you can customize for yourself is something that you will get excited about. So I love this collection. They have such cute cases with different designs. Like I have this one with B for my husband. You can put your kids' names or initials or even just a mantra. The possibilities are endless. All right, let's talk about these sneakers. These are men's and women's sneakers. Now I've seen these on my social media. Are these meant for running? Are they a style statement? Okay, so the sock sneaker has been around for a while. These are so inexpensive. They are so comfy. Yeah, they come in a million different colors and they're just great to kick around. I'm not sure about running, but this is more of like an athleisure sneaker. I think about people that are going back to school, maybe going to college. This is a great walking around sneaker. And when you talk about back to school and back to college or just the beginning of fall as well, this puffer jacket is absolutely great. And since you're so stylish, I got to get your input. How do you style this? OK, I love this jacket. This also comes in a lot of different colors. You know, I want my fall fashion to be bright and happy, a continuation of summer. So for me, the pink would be my go to. I would kind of, you know, puff up the sleeves a little bit. It's a little bit oversized and cool. Wear it open until it gets cold and then throw on, a, you know, a cool, chunky scarf with it. Stephanie, this has been such a treat. Thank you so much for joining us today. This was so fun. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. All right, you guys, now let's run through all the products one more time. We have the Stephanie Gottlieb jewelry, the arm candy cuff, the SC nail polish, the bobble bar iPhone case, the sock sneakers, and the puffer jacket. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Up next, Erica Domasek shows us how to add our own flair to fall from caramel apples, yum, to Halloween cookies. I'm here for it. I'm staying for those. Don't go away. The general election is right around the corner. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about, and you'll instantly get voting rules. See the next big deadline, learn how to take action for your plan, and even help others make their plans. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for November. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Good morning. Welcome to today. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Just ahead in this half hour, we're going to introduce you to Because every day, we start our morning so you can take on yours. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.
You get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight and expert analysis. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight and expert analysis. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm lifestyle expert and founder of PSI Made This, Eric Adamasek. I'm fallen for fall, and with all the sights and flavors of the season in full swing, I've got fun food crafts that will level up your hosting and the whole family can get in on. And remember, See that QR code at the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Let's get to it. Let's start with hosting. If you're having a Halloween party, you have to get on board with the Snack-O-Lantern. It's such a fun way to feed a crowd. It's honestly one of my favorite projects and I do it every season. First up, you're gonna need to get a big board. Now this one here is awesome because it has a ring, which is actually a lip that's gonna hold in your food. What we're gonna do is actually create a snack lantern on top of this using all your favorite snacks. Now, use what you have in your pantry, go to the grocery store, anything works. The big tip here is that you wanna use black and orange, obviously for Halloween. So to get started, first you need to make your outline of your eyes and your smile. I chose licorice, and we're just gonna fill it in with some chocolate covered raisins. You can really use anything that you love. For me, I think the fun part of this is that kids can do this, families can do this, and it is such a showstopper when you bring it over to someone's house or if you keep it to your own house for a party. Now, once you get the eyes set and you get your smile, these are Oreo cookies here, fill in with other fun orange things. For me, I chose the things that my family loves. Honestly, anything orange works. I've got some chocolate here, pretzels. It is the cutest platter, and I promise everybody will freak out. And I hope you love making your snack a lantern. We have a new take on gingerbread houses, the Haunted Manor. Now, I'm so excited about this. It just launched from Fancy Sprinkles. This is a kit that is gonna wow everybody this season. Now, it comes with molds, easy candy to melt, everything you need right here. You simply put it in your microwave. I like to do it at half power, 30 second intervals until it's completely melted like you see here. You're gonna snip the top and very carefully, you're gonna pour it right into your mold. See how easily it comes out? Super fun. Now you wanna make sure you fill it to the top. And once you fill it to the top, the kit doesn't come with this, but everybody needs to own a mini offset spatula. You might even have one already. You're simply gonna get it nice and smooth in there. And you wanna make sure you get into all the little crevices and the corners for a smooth panel. Now you've got a couple different panels on both of these. Now, once they're all completely full, you put them in the refrigerator. Now, just know, it only is gonna come with this dark chocolate color, but you can go to your craft store and get candy melts in so many different colors. As you can see here, I've got purple and green, orange, purple, anything works. Now, when everything's set, you're gonna bring them out. See how hard they are? They pop right out, super easy, and put them on a surface, a cutting board or a cookie tray, and it's time for the decoration part. This one is really fun because we've got these taste safe brushes that you're simply gonna dip into your luster. I like to start with gold and fill in all the details. Now they've already been set for you, so it's really easy to follow. You can do medium sized brushes, you can do little brushes. This is so fun for kids. I love this idea if you're having a bunch of people over and a party, everybody can make one. You simply fill in the ridges and it really comes alive with these colors. You wanna dust on in areas that you want to pop. There are windows, it's all fun. 
I love this so much. Now, when it's totally decorated and all your pieces are good to go, it's time to put it together. Now, just like a gingerbread house, we're not gonna use icing. We're gonna go back to the easy candy, melt it again, and that's our glue. So we simply glue each piece together. Don't worry, the directions are in the box, so you'll, you'll know where to put everything. And the really fun part, you get to decorate it with the fancy sprinkles. This blend has really fun colors, even little graves in it. You're gonna use your candy as your glue and sprinkle all the decorations on top to stick so it looks exactly like this. And by the way, you can eat this for weeks. You can keep it on a counter. This also makes for an amazing gift to bring to a house. Hope you guys have fun with it. And of course, we have everyone's fall favorites, the classic candy apples. We have two special versions to share with you today. Let's get into it. Now, this one is the Caramel Apple Kit. It's my personal favorite, grew up eating these. You get six different sticks, all the ingredients you see here, so you can make an entire platter for your whole family or a fun little get together. Now, to get started, you're simply gonna take your stick, put it right into the top of your apple. Make sure to remove the little stem you're gonna kinda of get it in there and then push in really forcefully, just like that. And you wanna make sure it's about halfway in. There you go, it's not going anywhere. Now, you wanna make sure your caramel is totally melted. Put it in your microwave for about 30 second intervals, full power until it's nice and liquidy. Now here's the fun part. We're going right in there and you're simply gonna get your apple completely covered in the caramel. Give it a nice twist, just like that. It's super gooey, oh my gosh, it smells amazing already. Now for toppings, we have two selections. The kit comes with either sprinkles or chopped nuts. If you have allergies, don't need to do those, just stick with the sprinkles. And we're simply gonna roll in just like this and it sticks so quick and it looks so cute. Ah, I'm loving this. Take a look, you're gonna put it right on your tray, let it set and that's it. Next up, we have the Golden Apple Kit. Now, Fancy Sprinkles makes this amazing and easy. It comes with six golden sticks, your same easy candy we used before in the Haunted Mansion, and some gold luster dust. Now, just like before, you're gonna microwave it, melt it, but this time, you're gonna clip it, pour it in a bowl, because we're gonna dip it just like that caramel we did before. Now, before you dip it, you obviously need to put the stick in there. These sticks have two sides. There's a metallic blue mirrored and we have the gold. Now take a look at it. There comes with a little foil. You're gonna rip that off and then you can see that beautiful golden shimmer. And it really just goes right in there. You might need a little force to get it in there. Now, as you can see, ours is totally set. Refrigerate them for 10 minutes and you're golden. Now for the fun part. I'm simply gonna take my golden luster dust. And yes, of course it's edible. Watch the magic happen. Are you ready? You're simply gonna paint it on and in seconds, this beautiful hue of metallic gold covers it. Dust it just like this. This is so fun for a party. This is an amazing gift to buy. Take a look at that. It takes seconds. It looks so gorgeous, super luxe, and it's pretty yummy too. And lastly, if you need to keep the kids busy and full, we've got a kit that will do it all. I've got a paint your own Halloween cookie kit that is so fun. Now the kit comes with sugar cookies that have stencils already on there to fill in and some blank ones. But the innovation is a actual palette of edible food dye with paintbrushes. So you can go right in there. Imagine it's like a watercolor kit, but all edible. So how do you do this? You simply take your cookie, I chose this cute pumpkin design. You're gonna take your paintbrush, you're gonna dip it into water. As you see, I have a couple colors here, so I have a couple different waters because we don't want the colors to get all messed up. I'm gonna choose orange, obviously for the pumpkin, and I'm simply gonna paint it right onto my cookie. Look how cute this is. It comes to life like this. Now, these are the type of kits that I think are perfect for parties, kids love them, again, this kit from William Sonoma makes for an amazing gift. I love this as a hostess gift. And they dry in seconds. Now, for your next color, you can use a different brush or go back in there to rinse it off. I'm just gonna, again, wet that, put it right back on this palette. By the way, the palette is a cookie too, so you can eat that. And we're gonna maybe just do a green brim. Have fun with them. 
Also, if you have littler kids who maybe can't stay in the lines, it comes with blank cookies so they can go crazy. Regardless, anything you do is gonna come out super fun and or really yummy too. So have fun this Halloween with all of these amazing snacks. They're creative, they're fun, they're a little spooky, and everyone is gonna eat them up. Let's run through everything we talked about one more time. We've got the Snack-O-Lantern, the Haunted Manor, the Candy Apples, and the Paint Your Own Cookie Kit. And that's a wrap on Buy and DIY. And for our show, it's been so fun sharing all of our favorites with you. Make sure to tune in next week for an all new episode of Shop All Day. Thanks for watching. Welcome to Pop Start Plus. I'm Dylan Dreyer, filling in for Carson again. And coming up on today's show, Kyle Richards. She's reprising her role in the original Halloween in the franchise's latest installment, and she gave us a Real Housewives update. Plus, the one and only Victoria Beckham and her visit to Studio 1A. And later, a treasure of a clip from our vault as we honor the late and legendary Angela Lansbury. But first, Jacob Sobroff has today's Pop Start. First up. This week, actress Elizabeth Debicki was spotted shooting the sixth and final season of Netflix's hit royal series in Mallorca, Spain. Final? F Wait, is it? it? Come on, here we Jumping go. Jumping really ahead. Sad. Guys, I know. So in the pic, she's seen channeling Princess wow. Diana's, like, look at this, iconic fashion wow. with a belted red dress similar to the one worn by the late royal during a 1997 visit to Northwick Park and St. Mark's Hospital. The Vicky was photographed alongside her two young crown co-stars, mm. Rufus Coppa right there, who plays Prince William, and Will Powell as younger brother Harry. The tenant actors will portray the iconic People's Princess for the final two seasons of the series. Uh, Season five of The Crown starts streaming November 9th on Netflix. You got some time. Two more seasons. That's right. Yeah, that's okay. right. But they're already, they, they, they're ahead of us. Yeah. Okay. I'm just like going through the stages of grief. I don't <laughs> think it should ever We got happen. time. We got time. Yeah. Coming up next, Louis Armstrong. A new documentary about the founding father of jazz is headed to Apple TV Plus oh. later this month. It's going to be so good. We have an exclusive sneak peek for you. The project titled Lou, Louis Armstrong's Black and Blues will follow his historic career in music and his life off the stage as he became a key figure in the civil rights movement. Plus, the director had access to never-before-heard home recordings and personal letters, which will be voiced by rapper Nas in the movie. Watch. Anybody who has uttered a sound on American radio, it's because of Louis Armstrong's innovations. He never would come out publicly, but at home he had his opinions. I've heard recordings of Pops just talking. He understood there was a battle in this country. I don't have no flag other than a black flag. That's right. There's a rumor that you invented scat singing. It came to me just like that. Oh, it looks so, so good. Blue Armstrong's Black and Blues is out October 28th on, in select theaters and on Apple TV+. Plus. You can watch the full trailer, by the way, by heading over to today.com. Go check it out right now. Yes. Speaking of great music documentaries, we've got a couple more for you. Next up, we are talking about Johnny Cash. Oh. The country blues icon is the subject of a big screen project due in theaters later this, later this year. And the movie's called Johnny Cash. I love that music. The Redemption of an American Icon. It is set to explore the legendary singer's journey with God, with religion, through the use of more than 100 tapes that he himself recorded for his biography. Plus, the film sat down with, uh, for interviews with members of his family, some of the biggest names in music. Here's a peek. There was not one person that didn't respect Johnny Cash. He sort of lived in his own atmosphere. His unapologetic attitude, that who made Johnny Cash cool. He was darkness and light, living in the same body, and one fought against the other. He wanted to be the biggest thing in the world, and he became the biggest thing in the world. And then he stepped back, and he said, that's not all there is. There's no lonelier place on earth for a man to be than separated from God. He faced himself. Mm -hmm. The Redemption of an American Icon will be in theaters for a very limited run. You can catch it December 5th to the 7th. I'm going to go see it. Yeah, me too. All right, one more music grade who is going to be telling their story on the screen sometime soon. Lizzo. Ooh. Yesterday, the 2B Love singer announced new details for her own doc titled Love Lizzo. It's going to be on HBO Max. They'll debut it on Thanksgiving Day. So after you fill up on your turkey and your stuffing, you can kick back with the Grammy winner. Love Lizzo was shot over a three-year period that spans the singer's Cause I Love You world tour, the pandemic, and the recording of her latest album, Special. 
Can't wait to check that one out. Uh, and finally, guys, the Joy Luck Club. A sequel's in the works for the groundbreaking drama, actually, based on Amy Tan's best-selling novel. This is what Variety says. Joy Luck Club 2 will continue the four families' multi-generational story as the women embark on the next phase of their lives. The sequel's set to show the mothers from the first film stepping into the role of grandma and their daughters becoming mothers, introducing audiences to a new generation and their relationship with heritage, love, and identity. The magazine also reports that original cast members are in talks to return to their roles. The original 1993 film is credited, of course, with paving the way for Asian and female representation all across Hollywood. No word yet on when production is scheduled to begin for that one. Good pop star. Huh? This is like couch potatoes I rejoice. So yeah. wow. Everything we need to watch. Love it. Yeah, exactly. Love it. Now to the reason we call this show Popstart Plus. We have even more headlines for you. First up, Spirited. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Yesterday, Apple TV Plus released the first trailer for Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell's highly anticipated holiday movie. Here's the setup. It's a musical comedy based on the classic Charles Dickens story, A Christmas Carol. Take a look. What is all of this? I am your ghost of Christmas present. Like a Christmas carol? What do you, do you think I'm gonna be all intrigued by what's behind the door? I'm not even a little bit curious. Damn it! <laughs> there was this little sick kid. What did they call him? It was Tiny Tim. No, no, no. Sweet kid, one crutch. No. Nope. Little Larry. No, Tiny Tim. Micro Mike. Super small Steve. Holy. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot wait for that. Rounding out the cast with Farrell and Reynolds is none other than Octavia Spencer. Spirited premieres in theaters on November 11th and on Apple TV Plus the following week. And finally, Jay Leno. You know the phrase, with great power comes great responsibility. Well, yesterday, the well, yesterday, the former Tonight Show host visited the Kelly Clarkson show and revealed how he handled having a direct line to President Obama when he was in the Oval Office. Take a look. When you come from a small town, you have the same idiot friends your whole life that you grew up with, you know? So I'm telling my friends, you know, I got Obama's cell phone. Let's call him up. You know, I go, I go we're not going to call him. He go, you don't have it. Nuh-uh, uh-huh, nuh-uh, uh-huh. And we're like 45-year-old men, we're going, nuh-uh, uh-huh, nuh-uh. OK. So finally, my friend said, no, you don't have it. I said, first of all, it's probably shut off since he's president. Well, if he's shut off, let's call it. I said, what time? It's 3 o'clock in California. Okay, it's 12 o'clock. All right, I dial the number. I hear, Brock here. Oh, Mr. President? Yeah, it's Jay Leno. What can I do for you, Jay? Uh, should I throw this number away? Good idea, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> what a gutsy prank phone call, uh, certainly I've ever heard of. At least Jay got to keep his street cred with his buddies. That's important, right? And those are your Pop Star Plus headlines. Just ahead, Kyle Richards on The Real Housewives and returning to the Halloween franchise. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Love you too. A masked killer takes aim at fires. A fatal attraction that leads investigators to turn towards their own. Internal Affairs, a new podcast from Dateline. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. From New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. 
Welcome back to Popstar Plus. As a child actress, Kyle Richards rose to fame through her appearances on Little House on the Prairie and in the original Halloween. Well, 44 years later, she's a member of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and returning to her Halloween role in Halloween Ends. Today's Donna Farazan caught up with Kyle to talk about both. I am so excited to be sitting down with Kyle Richards, who is reprising her role in the new movie, Halloween Ends. I was certain that I saw him watching me. For those who don't know much about Halloween, how would you describe Halloween Ends? I really enjoyed the story behind Halloween Ends and where they decided to take it. It's really exciting, and the acting was really incredible. I, th I thought everybody did an amazing job. I'm actually so excited for this, which is out of character for me, but I've watched all of the Halloween movies. Oh. They're not, they can be scary, but they're not too crazy scary. I think they're really scary. Okay. I mean, even as a little girl, I wasn't scared making the movie, but I'm scared when I see the movie and I see myself in that situation. So you are playing Lindsay Wallace, which you've played multiple times over the series. What is it about the character and about the series that makes you want to come back? Well, I, you know, I'm just so grateful to be a part of this franchise for all of these decades, starting out as a little girl. And over these years, my relationship with Jamie has grown and we've become closer. So to be able to play these characters together all of these years later is just something that, you know, I'm so appreciative of. In July, there was a crossover of two of your worlds collided when Jamie Lee Curtis came on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Now become a medical emergency. Oh, this is listen, all listen, bad. Listen, oh, hey, hey, Stop back off. Something. Yes. Get your hands off. No, you she has glue everywhere. Aunt Jamie's got it. Under control. Thank you, Auntie listen. Jamie. What was that moment like to have her come onto your set? It was really fun and exciting. I was a little nervous because this is not a world that she's a part of and she walked into my house and the first thing she did was start talking to the cameraman in the lens and I was like, Jamie, we don't do that. We can't look in the camera. She's like, I don't care. I'm breaking all the rules. I'm like, but they won't use any of this footage. Like, we're working now. Um, and then I had to explain to her like, you know, this is shot in real time. She's like, this is a Mother's Day lunch. Why is there a Christmas tree? I'm like, because it's December. So she was very entertained throughout that day, I have to say. She's like, now I get it. Now I get why so many people watch your show. The season finale of Real Housewives Beverly Hills dropped. Oh my God. Did either one of you leak to the press any of this information about Kathy? No, I no. don't know how to do that. Tell I, I her. Don't do that. No. No. It was someone who works for you. Interesting. A publicist. There was a lot of juice that I want to get into. But I wonder, is it hard for you that the juice and the drama that we are entertained by is in part part of your family struggles? Definitely affects me a lot. This season I found especially difficult. I had to stop watching, which I've never done in 12 years. So I actually went to the reunion not seeing everything. Um, for the first time ever because I felt like that's what I needed to do for my mental health and um, at the end of the day we have a lot of fun too. I think that gets lost sometimes and um, I wouldn't be here after 12 years if it wasn't also fun. You were also, not only you, but you were also at odds with Erica Jane about her lawsuit struggles. People died and the families are left in the aftermath. You're not showing any, any compassion. Is there going to be a little bit of reconciliation between you two at the reunion? All the stuff that we've dealt with in the show this season, um, we do address at the reunion. I will say not everything gets resolved. I'm really happy. I don't want to sit here for a toast. Can I leave? Doug, what do you want to do here? Kyle's a wreck. This year, nobody went anywhere. There was uh, no cast photo, no group hug, and so kind of left on a weird note. And that was disappointing. So what does that mean for next season? I think it's too soon to tell.
Your daughters and your husband, Mauricio, have a new reality show coming out soon. Is there anything you could tell us about it? It's called Buying Beverly Hills on Netflix, and here the girls grew up on the show with me, but they've never been like one to be front and center. And it was very funny seeing my daughters, you know, coming through my closets, you know, <laughs> grabbing outfits. I'm like, the whole show is gonna be things I've worn on the housewives. And obviously I've learned a lot after doing a, a reality show this many years. I just kept telling my daughters, never say anything Anything you don't want to say or anything you don't mean you know don't ever get pushed into something that you're not comfortable with stand your ground no matter what before we wrap up I just want to know how how do you spend Halloween well my eldest daughter Farah is born on Halloween so we've always made a big deal about Halloween every year and we always did a huge party as she got older called Farrowween um, but the last one we did for her really did me in so like the past couple of years I've had to take a break so now it's just decorating my house I just envision you always give out the king size bars you know that's what I envision your house, house. <laughs> If they were to come, that's nobody, what would happen. Because of, yeah, they, nobody comes to my house, which is also sad. So then I have to go somewhere because I like to see all, you know, the I know, so, I know. You know, I, I wear like the typical mom outfit, which is like cat ears and like a cat suit and go to dinner. I mean, it's I so, wear that like, too. It's just like going it's to the like door, a little get sexy. Little cat ears. Yeah. Just add cat ears to this and you're good to yeah, go. There you go. See, that's probably what I'll be wearing on Halloween. <laughs> We should mention Halloween ends, opens in theaters, and will be streaming exclusively on Peacock starting on Friday. All right, coming up next, we are spicing up your life with the delightful Victoria Beckham. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. mornings they're full of possibility and how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day we feel like we're right there with you because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight and expert analysis. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We're back here on Popstar Plus. We always love hearing from this next guest. Spice Girls fans, get ready. Victoria Beckham stopped by Studio 1A to update us on her family and her many, many projects. Fashion, beauty, and pop icon Victoria Beckham. She kind of does it all. Yeah, she always seems so <laughs> posh, so put yeah. together. The co-founder well. and creative director of Victoria Beckham beauty and her own clothing line and we just want to say before we begin we've tried out your makeup yeah we're it was, wearing it we are totally into it it must have been a fun thing to create well firstly you are both glowing ladies <laughs> i have to say you look gorgeous this morning so we were fishing for that yeah oh, gosh, it really is a dream mm. for me to be creating a luxurious fashion and beauty house of the future is mm. is a dream. I feel so blessed and so mm. lucky to have a job that I just love so much. Yeah, you, you know what I love about you, Victoria, because you are posh. We know yeah. that. And then you know you always have that like mm. like elegant look about you. Here you are in Paris, walking the runway. Come on, it's your. You had a moment, mm -hmm. and I loved it because you were mm -hmm. totally overwhelmed with gratitude and joy in that moment. You, yeah. I think you said you were like hoping to have some like moment where you're just like 
doing the catwalk, and here you are. Yeah. What were you thinking uh, in these moments? Do you know, I was so emotional because it's such a big deal mm. for me to have a show in Paris. It was a real highlight mm. of my career. I had my family there, mm. I had my friends there, and I felt so proud of my team. Mm. I really did. And I was planning on coming out and having a very yeah. cool picture taken, yeah. and I just broke down <laughs> when I saw my husband and my children who mm. are so supportive of what I do. I was just very, very happy. You know, it's so awesome. You're surrounded by all these people who love and adore you. Speaking of your uh, adorable husband, we were just in London for the Queen's funeral, and in that long, winding line, there was your husband waiting hours and hours and hours just to pay his respects. Uh, tell us about that, that decision. You know, David felt very, very humbled by the experience. Mm. It was something that he really wanted to do, and he is so happy that he did it. He said the mm -hmm. experience was something that he, he struggles to even express. Mm. It meant so much to him. He was in that queue for 14 hours. Mm. He said he met some really amazing people. Yeah. He was buying them all donuts. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I met some great, great people, uh -huh. and he's just so happy he did it. Mm. I mean, it's just amazing. You guys, by the way, have you been married 23 years? 23 years. Four kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of your, what, is it your daughter or your son just got married? Brooklyn. Brooklyn just yeah. got married. Oh. Son. Who, by yeah. the way, cooked here once with I us. Know. He did such a great job. I know. Oh, thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was a beautiful wedding. And as a mother, to see my son so happy um, means so much. Mm. What more can you ask for? You can't ask for one more thing. And what about, I mean, you're still a parent, which is kind of interesting. I always wonder about, you know, when you parent grown kids. What is that like for you in this moment? Do you know, I think that the kids grow up so, so quickly. Yeah. And it's about cherishing every moment and mm -hmm. we're a very close family it's all about communication mm -hmm. um and being present as a parent i love to work i love what i do mm -hmm. in fashion and beauty but being a parent being a good mom mm -hmm. is my number one job mm. um <laughs> they're amazing they work hard mm -hmm. they're good sweet kind human beings and mm -hmm. i think that that's what you want to do as a parent yeah, well definitely well. but it's not easy to pull off when both parents are in the public mm -hmm. eye and mm -hmm. international celebrities. Like, how did you yeah. keep them grounded? You know, I think it's just being close and having good mm -hmm. family around us, my parents and, and David's parents. And, mm -hmm. you know, just talking to them about everything. Mm. You know, we always say that this is an environment where we can talk and mm. communicate. Open. Yeah, we're very, very present. You know, yeah. the kids are, they're happy, hardworking, respectful kids. And mm -hmm. that's what you want. How delightful to have Victoria here. All right, coming up next, a look back with the late, great Angela Lansbury opening up about how she first got into acting. Stay with us. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight and expert analysis. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. From New Orleans, well, nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. The talented Angela Lansbury passed away this week, just a few days shy of her 97th birthday. She was a five-time Tony Award winner, and in her honor, we pulled a special moment from our vault from 1980, where she spoke about the start of what would become an incredible career.
Sweeney Todd is about to make a national tour with the woman we're talking about, the star Angela Lansbury, the star who has won the hearts of audiences around the world. Now, how's wow, that? what an intro. That's pretty good, huh? <laughs> I should say. You now, got the it ushers will pass among you, and if you'll just give whatever you can, we'd appreciate it. <laughs> Angela Lansbury, you have been a star for a long time, and you are a, a singer, but you are an actress. What is acting? Well, what is acting? Acting is kind of uh, putting yourself away in a closet and emerging as somebody else. And that's really what acting is about. Don't ask me how you do it. That's that, but that is the process that has to take place. Don't ask me how you do it. Is it, a, is it instinctive? You can't learn to be an actress? No, I don't believe you can learn to be an actress. I think if you're an actress, or let's say a character actress, in other words, somebody who wants to become another character other than themselves, you can't learn how to do it. You can learn how to do it better, but you, you have to have an instinct for the game. You know what I mean? Well, if you had an instinct, how early did you recognize that instinct? I'd say I was about nine or ten years old, or maybe younger even, then I realized that I liked, enjoyed being somebody else. And I guess uh, it showed. Did My it mother show? realized it. Yeah, you know? your mother. You had a very unusual mother. I mean this in the nicest way. Wasn't it sort of a, a gypsy situation? I mean, your mother really wanted you to be an actress? Well, I wouldn't say she was like Rose, no. She was not a pushing, uh, you know, belligerent, kind of frustrated person herself who wanted to realize her ambitions through me, her daughter. However, she was an actress, and she recognized that uh, her little tot had showed signs of, of uh, having the same talent, you know. So she did encourage me, and as I said, she nudged me along, and she, uh, she just put things in my way, and I just picked them up. And, and did them, you know. When she put things in your way, you mean an obstacle or an opportunity? No, an opportunity, like learning to dance, going to dancing school, taking elocution lessons, all of those um, things that you have to pick up, you know, before you can really become an actress. Where did all this happen? In England, when I was a kid. And then later on, of course, in America. Most of my training, incidentally, was in America. Was there one big break in your life? Was there a turning point, a fork in the road when Angela Lansbury change from tot with promise to a person who thought she could really become a professional actress? Oh, very definitely, yes. After all, I had the greatest break in the world when I was 17 years old, and I was signed by MGM to play The Maid in Gaslight. That's the and, movie with Charles Boyer and Ingrid yeah, Bergman. And I mean, that was, a, that was really a fork in the road, because one fork went off to wrapping packages in a department store, and the other fork went off to a job at $500 a week at MGM. So you can imagine what a tremendous upheaval, what joy that brought you were only to 17, my mother and me. 17 at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And you got an Academy Award nomination for Supporting Actress. Yes. At that age. Yes. It was your first film? It was boggling. Yes. That's, Absolutely. What do you do for an encore when you get an What do you do, right? Huh? Well, then you get a wonderful movie like The Picture of Dorian Gray, in which I sang Little Yellow Bird, which is very dear to my heart because it, it was such a... It was such a... Uh, it was so in opposition to what I had done in Gaslight. And it showed this other side of my fledgling ability, shall we say. And yet it, it uh, was the beginning of me being able to play a variety of roles rather than just always heavies. When you were a little child, your mother gave you singing and dancing lessons. When did you have your first opportunity to sing professionally in, in a major way? Was it the Sondheim Show? Yeah, except I did, I did sing in a couple of movies, but the Sondheim Show, you're absolutely right. When I got a wonderful letter from Arthur Lawrence saying, have you ever sung, dear Miss Lansbury, Mr. Stephen Sondheim and I are writing a musical. We would be very interested in you appearing in it. Have you ever sung? You know, well, I immediately picked up the pen, and I wasn't a letter writer in those days. I've s since become one. Uh, and I wrote a letter back saying, Dear Mr. Lawrence, I was terribly awed, you see, because after all, he'd written Gypsy and uh, West Side Story, and I, I was so boggled with the idea that this, this great man had written to me and said, Could I sing? That I wrote back and said, I believe I can carry a tune, and uh, I would like to audition, you see. So they, he and Steve came out to the coast, and I did audition for them, and I sang A Foggy Day in London Town. Not very well, but loudly. That was, the, that was the thing in those days. You had to sing loud, because we weren't all mic then. Like you know, now. we had to uh, compete with an orchestra. Well, that started an association with Sondheim, because in the last year and a half, you've been a sensation in Sweeney Todd, music and lyrics by right. Sondheim, right. in which you play this woman who takes people, puts them in a grinder, and makes meat pies, which is why nobody ate in the green room today, knowing <laughs> you were coming. The Danish looked a little odd. I know what you mean. Do you well, like playing that role? It's almost an opera. Well, it is, well, yes and no. It, it, it is an opera, but it is also very clear what's happening. Visually, I think it's one of the most uh, tantalizingly exciting 
uh, stage presentations in many, many years. And uh, it, may be, it may be sung, but what we're saying, it's recitative, and it's got some wonderful songs in it that aren't just arias. There are no arias. There are a couple at the beginning, you know, with Sweeney Todd. But personally, I sing a bunch of wonderfully funny and comical songs. And, uh, you know, Have a Little Priest, I think, is one of the really classic songs of all time. And I mean, they, they, they use these uh, customers uh, for the pies. It's, it's a matter of expediency, that's really. Exactly. I mean, and that's the way she, at, she approaches it. Uh, she is a totally amoral, wonderful, you know, grist-to-the-mill character off the London streets. And she has so much humor in her that, uh, well, it sends me up to play her. I really enjoy it. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And good luck on your national tour of Thank you. Sweeney Todd. Thank Angela you Langer. very much for having me on. Such grace from Angela. We are sending our love to her family, friends, and everyone she touched. So thanks for being here today for Popstar Plus. We'll be back tomorrow, same time, same place. Have a great day. Do you see this? See this pizza? You want to eat this pizza? Too bad, I'm going to. <laughs> I'm Sama Dot. I'm Sama Dada. I'm a cookbook author and recipe developer in the plant-based food scene, which is becoming more innovative every day. I'm on a mission to see how startups, restaurants, and chefs are changing the way we see and eat plants. And I can't wait to show you how to bring more delicious dishes into your kitchen. Who doesn't just love ooey, gooey, and totally decadent cheese? I know you do. Americans truly can't get enough. In fact, we've tripled our cheese consumption since the 70s. Today, the average person here eats a whopping 35 pounds of cheese a year. 35! So it's no surprise that cheese is usually one of the toughest things to give up if you're ditching dairy. But I've got some good news for you. These days, there are a lot of tasty options out there when it comes to vegan cheese, and I'm determined to explore them all. Well, maybe not all, but I've discovered a few really, really good ones. I'm checking out a new type of pizza shop serving up killer pies. Then, I'll be using cashews to make an irresistible dairy-free dip of my own. But first, I'm headed to Riverdale, an artisanal cheese shop making its mark on the plant-based cheese world. Michaela Grobe is the owner and cheesemonger of Riverdale, a vegan cheese shop on Manhattan's Lower East Side. It's the only shop in New York City that exclusively features dairy-free artisanal cheeses. Michaela, thank you for having me. I love a plant-based cheese moment. This is very exciting for me. Tell me about what inspired you to start Riverdale. Basically, I love cheese. Um, I love animals. I became vegan for 40 animals, basically, and when I then started looking around for cheese. I found that, you know, it was, it was out there, but you couldn't really access it easily. Michaela's quest for better vegan cheese started a decade ago, when it was still really hard to find dairy-free cheese that was actually good. While working a high-profile job in the corporate world, Michaela saw an opportunity to open a new type of store. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if there would be one place just like any other tea shop where everything's vegan, and that's kind of where the idea came from. She began reading books on vegan cheesemaking and took classes with acclaimed vegan chefs. On the weekends, Michaela went through a lot of trial and error in her home kitchen, while also crafting a plan to start her own food business. I still had my corporate job, and at one point I was like, okay, I think it's time for me to leave the corporate world and really do something about it. I really thought, I want, to, I want to try it. If it, if it fails, it fails, right? But at least I tried it. With enough money saved, she left her job in 2015 and opened Riverdale, named after her two pets, a dog named River and her cat, Fidel. But Michaela's mission to make vegan cheese more accessible wasn't just a passion project. It was a pivotal time for a booming business. In 2017, vegan cheese sales hovered around $294 million. By 2022, that figure is projected to reach nearly 600 million. That's a 100% increase. Are you trying to mimic 
you know, dairy cheese? Or are you kind of creating something in your own line, in your own world? Yeah. Um, or are you just trying to replicate the experience of buying cheese? Yeah. It's a little bit of, of everything. It's the experience, it's a product that people know. Uh, that looks like a brie, that looks like a, a gouda. But then there are also other cheeses that have no equivalent in the dairy world. Riverdale's blue cheese uses the same fungus that creates the iconic navy marbling in the dairy version. But the shop's Vitopian is a cashew and soy-based cheese with a unique texture that's semi-firm yet creamy. The way I like to explain our customers is to not look for like for like um, imitation. It's the same as if you would make a a gouda from a cow's milk and from a goat's milk. It has the same techniques, the same cultures, but the end product is very different. So it's the same if your base is a cashew nut. The end product's different, but it's still a cheese, in my, my view at least. Who do you want to be eating this cheese? I mean, we definitely have a lot of vegan customers, but we also have people that are vegetarian, um, lactose intolerant, so whereas we do obviously speak to the vegan community, um, for me it was also important that we reach out and connect with the non-vegan community. You're targeting the cheese curious. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that it's difficult to make the switch because people are afraid of like, oh my god, what am I going to eat? Michaela has the cheesy answer to that question. In the shop's kitchen, she showed me how to make a few of her handcrafted cheeses. Okay, Michaela, what are we making today? So we're actually making a feta today. It's gonna be a very salty and crumbly and firm one, which is perfect for salads. Vegan cheesemongers use a variety of ingredients to mimic the taste and texture of dairy cheese. Common bases include a combo of nuts, vegetable oils, and soy products. So for this one, we're actually using tofu. This tofu has been frozen first, and then we kind of squeeze out all the liquid so it becomes very dry. Michaela uses firm tofu to create a sturdy feta. It allows the cheese to uniformly slice and dice, but also crumble, just like the traditional Greek cheese. For flavor, Michaela adds Himalayan salt, red wine vinegar, garlic powder, and Greek oregano. Then there are two types of fats. So you're using coconut oil here. Why are mm -hmm. you using coconut and not a different kind of oil or fat? Yeah, I mean, coconut oil um, firms up once it's chilled, mm -hmm. so it really helps with just making the cheese firmer. All right, so I've got some olive oil here. Mm -hmm. And it's just olive oil with a little bit of oregano in it, and it's just to get a little bit more flavor. And I'm just using a, like a, a tablespoon or something like that. Okay, so we're ready to blend our feta. Mm -hmm. Everyone's gonna become friends in here. Mm -hmm. What are we yeah. looking for for it to be done, and how long are we processing for? So we're looking for a very smooth, almost shiny kind of consistency. Even when I think it's done, I usually like to give it another minute or two just to be on the, uh, on the safe side. You can't over blend this. Michaela scrapes down the processor every minute or so to ensure the mixture reaches a smooth, creamy consistency. Then it's transferred into cheese molds. We made two flavors, one plain and one with an olive tapenade center. The cheeses sit in the fridge for two days to firm up. I made some ahead already, oh, really? so we don't have to wait overnight and we can taste them right away. Oh, exciting. So this is what it looks <gasps> like when you turn it upside down. What? So this is one with the um, tapenade layer, <gasps> and here is one with uh, sun-dried tomatoes. Wait, this is crazy how firm it is. Yeah. Can we eat them? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Will you have some with me? I want to so, try this one. Yeah, you what? try that one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. So it's nice and salty. Wow, that's crazy. Crumbly, but it doesn't taste anything like the, uh, the, the tofu that we use as a base. It feels very light, but still like dense enough to mm -hmm. feel like, oh wow, like I'm eating something that could really stand up to a dairy yeah. cheese. Yeah. This is so delicious. My mind is blown. You have so many different types of cheeses. Can we try some mm. other ones too? Oh, absolutely. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours.
Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight and expert analysis. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you too. <laughs> Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. At Riverdale, a vegan cheese shop in New York City, owner Michaela Grobe makes two cheeses in-house. She also imports over a dozen varieties from across the country and around the world. I'm genuinely freaking out because this all looks like real cheese. <laughs> like, talk to me about what we're seeing here. So this one is another one of our house made cheeses. It's, it's, a, it's a blue cheese type and it's aged for about, well, two to three months. It's definitely more on the funkier side. The uh, base ingredient here is cashews. Then we have a brie style here. The cultures that are being used for, uh, to create this nice fluffy rind mm. is the same as you would use on a dairy application. This one's uh, from Texas and it actually has um, cashews and rice flour. Oh, what kind of cheese is this? So that's a smoky aged cheddar style, very nice and firm and very strong and uh, deep flavor. And here we have one that's made in New York and it's made from macadamia nuts and hemp. Mm. And it has a little bit little bit of a kick, a little bit of a spice, something like along the lines of a pepper jack. I'm very excited to try them. How are we gonna assemble it? Can we make like a little cute cheese platter or something Oh yeah, like absolutely. We have a few things that will go really nicely with each of those cheeses. Nice. Riverdale also carries many cheese board essentials, including crackers, jams, and vegan charcuterie. I would have a party just to serve this. It was almost time to dive in, but you already know, my camera always eats first. I think I have to start with the pepper jack because yeah, I love spice. Yeah, absolutely. So it is a bit spicy. I'm okay. Yeah, especially I'm, the crust is, is gonna be spicy. I'm ready for it. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Once I get started, I just can't stop. Vegan blue with strawberries, anyone? Cheers. Cheers. Oh my god. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. And we had to pair the brie with pear. Michaela, you have changed my world today. This is so <laughs> exciting. Um, Great. And I just can't thank you enough. This is incredible. And I, I hope people really see all the amazing things you're doing with vegan cheese. I'm really happy to have so many more cheesemakers. We find so many more cheesemakers like every month. There's a new one we start working with. Thank you so much. If you ever need more tasters, I'll be sure to just call like yes. hit me up. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll be here. <laughs> I've saved a little room for my next cheesy stop. A New York pizza shop firing up plant-based pies for their screaming fans. Day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Just ahead in this half hour, we're going to introduce you to 
because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight and expert analysis. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. I live in Brooklyn and there are few foods that scream New York City more than pizza. But is pizza really pizza without cheese? Vegan cheeses may be delicious, but capturing the melty, gooey goodness of mozzarella is tough. And that's obviously essential for a perfect pie. Meet one of my favorite vegan pizza spots, Screamers. Come on. Are you kidding? Is it a joke? It's not a joke. It's vegan. <laughs> Open since 2016, Screamers is similar to many iconic slice spots all over the city. Head chef Joy Strang has worked at Screamers for four years. She developed popular pies on the menu, like the truffle scream, a pizza covered in oyster and cremini mushrooms, plant-based parm, arugula, and a drizzle of fragrant truffle oil. Tell me about the inspiration behind Screamers. I mean, the inspiration was literally just that. It was a bunch of vegans sitting around wanting to um, have a really good slice of New York pizza, and thus Screamers was born, you know? What was your background before Screamers? Uh, so I spent a lot of time as a chef for a Mexican restaurant, and I've also worked in American fine dining. But I also find that like cooking vegan food, you just take the same methods that you use for cooking anything and just apply it to vegan ingredients. Screamer serves all types of pies, from classics like pepperoni and a fully loaded Supreme, to mashup flavors like a Reuben pie topped with spiced seitan and Thousand Island dressing. They have two locations in Brooklyn and a dedicated following on social media. How far has somebody traveled to get some Screamers pizza? We get people from all over. Brazil um, is notable, uh, Germany. And I always feel badly for people that are traveling from out of town and they come here because then they eat the pizza and then they have to think about the pizza when they go home. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm really sorry for you. You ruin people. Yeah. What do you say, Joy, to people who are skeptical of vegan cheese? Because obviously cheese is a huge part of pizza. I'd say, honestly, that's probably our number one challenge is people come in and they're like, oh, I don't know about the cheese. But vegan cheese has come a long way. You know, um, before there weren't as many options, but I think there's so much more focus and emphasis on making things more delicious these days as opposed to just having a alternative. Screamers uses a specific vegan cheese to replicate the texture of dairy cheese. So we use a uh, BioLife mozzarella. Oh, nice. Yeah. So we've tried many, many cheeses, but this seems the best mouthfeel, I think. What is it made out of? Coconut oil and potato starch is the base of it. So again, it's very allergy friendly, um, no soy, no nuts. Screamers also makes two cheeses in-house, an almond-based Parmesan and an ultra creamy ricotta. Today we're going to make our almond ricotta, um, which goes on a lot of our four pizzas. Yay, I'm yeah. excited. Okay, so I see you've soaked the almonds to soften them, but they're also blanched as well. There's no skin on them. So why is that happening there? Yeah, because the skin tends to, one, um, give you like a little bit of a, a different mouthfeel. It's um, it's a little bit, uh, yeah, a little bit grainy and also just for color purposes. Okay, should we get started? What are we doing first? So we're going to put in our um, soaked and blanched almonds into the Robocoop. All right, and then okay. next we're going to go with our salt. Lactic acid goes in there next. Why are we using lactic acid here? So it gives it a little bit of a tang, you know, that um, you know every cheese tends to have. We achieve that by putting the lactic acid in there. All right. Yeah. And then this is the blended oil. It's a little bit of vegetable oil and a little bit of um, olive oil. And then we're just gonna snap the lid on here. The mixture blends for a couple minutes. Once everything gets creamy, it's time for a taste. Are we done? Yeah, we're looks done. It's delicious. You want to give it a try? I really would. All right. I thought you never asked. Yeah, for sure. Mmm. Pretty good, right? 
very creamy like ricotta. Joy, it feels wrong to have cheese without the pizza. Sure. So what can we put this almond ricotta on top of? Well, we're gonna show you one of our most popular pizzas, like we mentioned before, the buffalo cauliflower. Um, yeah, so we'll use the cheese that we just made for that. All right, what are we starting with? So um, this is the, our dough. We make all of our dough in-house. I'd say the most challenging part about making pizza at home is probably stretching the dough, mm -hmm. right? So you want to start by flouring both sides so it doesn't stick. Um, and then we're going to press out all of the air bubbles. And while pressing out the air bubbles, you're kind of like keeping it in this circle shape. So it makes it a little bit easier to, uh, to stretch and still be formed into this like perfect, beautiful circle. All right, so now that we've gotten our air bubbles out here, we're gonna flip it over on our hand and start the stretching process. It's like you would literally do this in your sleep. I know, I mean, I probably could, I probably have. All right, so wow. there we are. Did yeah. you just see that though? That was like in two seconds. What is the trick to spreading sauce pr appropriately okay. and well? So you want to, I always start in the middle and then I, I circle out like this and I push, um, push the sauce to the sides. This is like a little bit of like hypnosis going on. <laughs> yeah. So take a big handful of the cheese and I will say, I'm gonna give you a little cheese spreading advice here. Okay. You wanna start high and then just kind of sprinkle it all around so you get an even coat, okay? Okay, all right. You're doing great. Okay, yeah, I was looking for affirmation really quick. <laughs> yes, I, you're doing a great job. Can you see that? The pizza gets a few generous dollops of that luscious ricotta. How does this bake off? Well, it actually gets a little bit crispy on top, which makes it so, so delicious. Okay, what's next? All right, so then we're going to put our uh, buffalo cauliflower on top. Oh. Yeah. Okay, tell me about how you prepared the cauliflower. Okay, for sure. So we make our own buffalo sauce here, and we take, um, we break down cauliflower and we cook the cauliflower in buffalo sauce. How hot is this oven and how long are we keeping our pizza in there for? So we keep the oven between 500 and 550, um, and it's gonna cook for about six, six, six or seven minutes. Okay. Yeah, so super quick. Quick. Yep, and then it'll be nice, crispy, and uh, golden brown on the edges, and that's how you know it's done. The seven minute wait, it felt like eternity. How's it doing in there? Oh, she, oh. she, she beautiful. All right, let's oh. take one more peek at the bottom here. What oh. do you think? I think it looks gorgeous. I think she's What beautiful. do you think? I think, I think she's ready. Joy, I've got to document this process. Okay. It's just simply a part of my brand. Okay, do it. All right, you ready? I'm ready. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> that looks so fire. Are you kidding me? I know, right? The pizza is served up in true New York style. You're not eating off of a paper plate. Are you eating pizza? Are you even eating a Are New York pizza? No. Amazing slice job. Boom. Come on. <gasps> mm. What do you think? Stop. So good, right? This tastes like real pizza. Yeah. I don't even want to say real pizza. It just tastes, tastes like, like regular pizza. dairy pizza. Yeah. It's so good. It's so delicious. Yeah. What does it mean to you, Joy, to be creating this traditional New York slice that's vegan, that gives so many more people an option? It's awesome. I mean, when people come to New York, when people think about New York, one of the things they, they think about is pizza. You know, they want to check that box off. Oh, I had a New York pizza. So it's really, really awesome that we've given the option to every single person to be able to do that, you know? You know what I also really like uh, to hear is um, people who have dairy allergies or even parents with their children that have dairy allergies and they are always so happy that we exist because otherwise they wouldn't be able to have pizza and like a, such a big part of a kid like childhood is eating pizza, right? Yeah. Yeah. We do a lot of like uh, little kids pizza parties and stuff like that, cute. you know, it's so <laughs> cute. And so, you know, it's like that little bit of normalcy. It's like, oh, I can't have dairy, but still have really good pizza. What are some of your favorite reactions from vegans and non-vegans alike who try your pizza for the first time? Like a non-vegan reaction, they are like, oh, it's actually good. And you're like, I told you so. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, we have a lot of people that come in and this is their favorite pizza spot and they are not vegan. If you can't travel to Brooklyn for a screamer's pie, don't worry, I've got your dairy-free cheese cravings covered. Up next, I'm making my super creamy cashew queso. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app.
Allie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide. How's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load every single morning. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. One of my favorite things to make when I'm having friends over if I want a really delicious snack by myself is my roasted jalapeno queso. You might be wondering, a plant-based version of queso? Are you okay, Sama? But to that I say, I'm perfect. Chile con queso is a Tex-Mex classic that's traditionally made with a great melting cheese and green chilies. We're using cashews as the base and nutritional yeast for a cheesy, savory flavor. And jalapeno, I can't forget about our spice. It's super creamy and cheesy. You won't even miss the dairy. Because I like a little spice in everything that I do, we're adding jalapeno to our queso. I like roasting the jalapeno to get that really smoky, delicious flavor. You've got your jalapeno, drizzle it generously with some olive oil. I like to just rub the jalapeno in the oil just to get it nicely coated. All right, say goodbye to our jalapeno. It's about to get roasted. See you later. The jalapenos roast at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes until lightly charred. Look at our jalapeno. She's cooled. It's blackened on the outside. Also, you'll notice that when you let the jalapeno cool, it's gonna get a little wrinkly. That's totally fine. My secret weapon in creating a really delicious and creamy queso, cashews. I soak them either overnight or flash soak them for an hour in hot water. This allows the cashews to expand. They really get nice and pliable and soft. The first thing I'm gonna do is drain my cashews. Now I'm just gonna add them to my blender. Cashews are in, now I'm just gonna add two cloves of garlic. You might be wondering how I'm gonna make this queso cheesy without the cheese, and to that I say nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is one of my secret weapons in my plant-based repertoire. It's really amazing for creating a savory and cheesy taste to everything you add it to. Beautiful. This is such a super simple recipe, it's actually crazy. Everything's going into a blender. We're gonna add some salt and some freshly ground black pepper. And don't forget our gorgeous jalapeno. Now to help everything come together, I'm just adding a little bit of vegetable broth. You could use water, I just like using veggie broth because it adds some more taste, some more flavor, and we love more flavor when we're cooking, right? Beautiful. Now we get to blend. Are you excited? I'm excited. All right, let's blend. All right, let's check the texture. <gasps> Creamy, velvety, queso-y, not a word, but I have my own dictionary. I don't know if you need that. It's beautiful. My chips have arrived. I'm ready to plate my queso and I'm very excited about it because then I get to eat it. And that's what we're all here for. Check out this texture, okay? <gasps> Are you checking it out? You sure? Creamy, cheesy, but no cream or cheese. Crazy. All right, I want this to look really cute, so I'm just gonna smooth the top out, the back of my spoon, like so. A very simple garnish, just a little bit of pepper. Could you believe it could be that easy? Cheesy, delicious, creamy queso, no dairy involved. Now I get to eat it. Here I go. Chip ready to take a dip. Hmm. <gasps> Do you see that? Mm. 
Wow. Ooh, that heat is so good. Mm. This is in my cookbook, so I've obviously made this a bunch of times, but it's so good every time. Queso is perfect to share, so luckily I have my whole crew here. So guys, I don't know what you're doing. Get in here. Come on. That's more like it. <laughs> Teamwork, awesome, love that for us. I hope this showed you can make really creamy, delicious, and cheesy recipes without the dairy. It's amazing, you have to try it. Not to be cheesy, or to be cheesy, I hope this inspired you to try cheese without the dairy because it is just as delicious and versatile. Thanks for doing this, Jess. Good thanks, to see you. <laughs> yeah, thanks for making it all the way out here. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for having us. Ten years, that's no joke. Happy 10th birthday. Thank you, thank you. When I say 10 years, yes. what does that sound like to you? It sounds like not very long when you have children, right? Because <laughs> you think of that like 10-year-old kid and or yourself as a 10-year-old. But when you're an entrepreneur, 10 feels like a hundred years. <laughs> it's like dog days, man. You're like, oh, every day feels so long. It's, uh, it's cool though. I learned a lot about myself in this process, on this journey. Every day is different. Every day I'm learning. Every day I'm uncomfortable, but I do, I do love where we are today and what we've been able to accomplish. And you know, when we started 10 years ago, Consumers, everyday people didn't know that they could take their health into their own hands. They didn't know that they could demand more from companies. They didn't know that, you know, there can be ethics and standards that they live by applied to businesses that they decide to spend their hard earned money on. And that is something that I'm really proud of. You have to care about the planet and you have to think about how your ingredients or your products affect human health. What were you seeing out there that made you think we've got to change this? So when I became a mom and I was pregnant, I used products that my mother recommended for me to use and I had an allergic reaction myself and it just really made me think through health and wellness differently. I grew up very sick as a kid. I think it's why I became an actor when I was young because mm. I spent a lot of time alone and in hospital rooms and I had complications with asthma and allergies, terrible. And so I was just thinking about as I was becoming a new mom and I was like, I gotta keep this little person alive and I just want her to be happy and healthy. Like there's really nothing else that matters. And I was afraid that she could have an allergic reaction. What could I do for her? What if her throat was closing and she's an infant? She couldn't even tell me because she's a baby. And I was terrified about that possibility. And so I did research and I learned about harmful chemicals, toxic chemicals that are in everyday products. And so I lobbied on Capitol Hill for chemical reform a couple of times. And I just realized that human health was really politicized in this country. And so I was like, all right, well, I guess I can create the solution and I spent, you know, so much of my life selling movies and, you know, different products for different companies. And so I felt I knew how to reach the consumer in a genuine way. And so that's really where my mission and purpose came from, to create a company that has safety at the heart of it, around health and wellness, and thinks about the planet and people. And so I didn't have a business degree. I was super insecure. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, I had to really like believe in myself first. And that's been a journey. I've had imposter syndrome and I've felt unworthy and all those things. But at the end of the day, what keeps me moving is when people say, by having honest in our home, you've made my life better. 
It's such a leap to say, okay, so there's something wrong here. A lot of us have that somewhere in our lives and say, I'm going to be the one to do something about it. How did you have the guts to, to make that leap and to say, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to be the one? Well, two things. One, there's no nepotism for me in entertainment. So no one was rolling out the red carpet for me to be a successful <laughs> actress. In fact, everyone was like, yeah, right. <laughs> Good luck with that one. And so I think the fact that I figured out how to make a career for myself in entertainment when there was nobody that looked like me. And frankly, I didn't really ever play into the stigmas or the stereotypes. Mm -hmm. And so I was really kind of rebellious in my spirit and how I wanted to show up as an actress. And I think that same rebellious spirit is what I brought to the table when I was thinking about how I was going to get this done and create this company. It just made sense. It just felt like I can't believe there isn't a company that that's called The Honest Company and, and that stands for these values. Is it a hard decision though to walk away, at least temporarily, of course you're still acting, but yeah, to say this I is did. gonna I be my focus now? It was my focus. You know, what's interesting is like, first of all, I think because I didn't grow up with a lot, I was never really that flashy and I wasn't um, overspending. <laughs> I was really quite conservative, so I felt comfortable with my financial situation. So I felt comfortable to pursue what I believed was my purpose. I was like, when I had my baby, she really shifted my, the context of my life yep. and my priorities. And I really just thought about my life choices and purpose and legacy differently. And I couldn't do anything else. I guess the drive was so intense mm -hmm. and so real. Here you talk about your insecurities and your imposter syndrome, which we all have all the time, of course. But you know that there are people who are like, oh, she's a movie star. What does she know about this? How is she going to run a company? Yeah, there's all, a lot of that. All of those things. <laughs> all of those things. And you, you heard all those things. Uh, yeah, I did. Did it get to you at any point? Or were you so focused on this that you just sure. shut it out? Of course it does. I think a lot of the naysayers, they drove me in a way. It was almost like putting fuel on, on the fire. And also like when you come from people having zero expectations of who you could be, there's a fearlessness. You can only kind of go up from there, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so the, the growth of the company over time is, was huge, right? I mean, like you went from, okay, here's a spark of, of an idea. Mm -hmm. People responded very quickly. Mm -hmm. How did you guys sort of manage the pace of growth and success that I mean, you were experiencing. That's, yeah, that's sort of the learning, right? It's it's learning what is a healthy pace of growth and it's this game, right? Of you st staying true to who you are and, and what you believe in. It's a really difficult lesson to learn when you're in it, but once you're out the other side, I think that's why I'm so passionate about mentoring uh, other entrepreneurs, especially women, then I think trusting your gut on what to do. And then the harder part actually for me is then aligning a team around me that feels the same way. And it feels like too, you're talking about the ups and downs of the 10 mm -hmm. years, you can't get complacent, right? You no. can't say we've figured it out. You're never comfortable. We cracked the code. No, there's no cracking of the code. It's almost like every challenge which now I look at as lesson is really there to prepare you for the next stage. And if you can just, I guess, sort of welcome them as lessons instead of them sort of like weighing you down, then those are the entrepreneurs that you see them. You see them, you know, there's last man standing. They figure it out, they go with the flow, their business models change, they are malleable. Um, they're relevant. Talk about being a mentor to other women and Latino women who are mm -hmm. starting companies. Who were those people for you on the front side in 2011 and when all this was incubating? I'm not someone who speaks to strangers in the elevator. Like I'm a naturally kind of shy person and I have learned how to be a public facing person. Um, I play characters because I like to be somebody else. Yeah, I had to learn how to get out of my comfort zone and reach out to people, and I did. So I would reach out to pretty much any woman I would meet, even like when I would do sales meetings and meet executives um, in retail and in other places, 
go to conferences and if I connected with someone I would just say can I call you mm. <laughs> and then I would and I would say have you ever dealt with this or that because I guess no one really tells you what you're gonna end up facing and where the challenges are really gonna lie and you know you can have a great idea getting people behind that idea is the hard part were there crazy pinch me moments along the way I'm thinking of for example when you were on the cover of Forbes magazine mm-hmm <laughs> It was pretty wild. <laughs> Getting people to be aware of something that was so important to me that this message is spread and that people know that they can, more importantly, companies have to do better and that people can demand more. That was sort of like the validation that this idea is really for everyone. You went public a year ago. Happy one year anniversary of that. Thank you. How amazing was that to stand at the NASDAQ that day? It's still surreal to think about that. You know, so few women ever even get a chance at being there and being in that space and in that environment. I want all women out there to know that there's plenty of room at this table. It's crazy. Just having you know women and then even less when you think of women of color. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's just there's so few of us, so it is wild when you get a chance to be there and I guess have even more conviction around just how necessary it is to make space for others and just to make sure that that door that you pushed open never closes. What would you say to somebody who wants to chase the idea but is trying to kind of summon the courage to do it? You just have to, and I think instead of being discouraged by feedback, you have to be relentless and you're only going through that challenge to make you better so that you can hone in on your idea. It's worth the leap. Take a shot. Yeah, you have to. For women, we are half the population. We have half of the ideas. We make all the buying decisions, you know, not all of them, but a lot of them. Why are we still left out of the business world? And there's a lot of group think nothing good comes out of that. Mm. <laughs> no good ideas. Right. It's only the, the ones that are provocative and polarizing that actually change the world. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. A masked killer takes aim at fires. A fatal attraction that leads investigators to turn towards their own. Internal Affairs, a new podcast from Dateline. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. A masked killer takes aim at fires. A fatal attraction that leads investigators to turn towards their own. Internal Affairs, a new podcast from Dateline. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. This is the room where it happens, huh? You know, a lot of thinking happens in here. I like more of a community, so we have a ta I have a table there, and then, um, yeah, we can share screen and still do all of the like business updates and things, but uh, it's a more flexible kind of space. That was the first thing I noticed. There's no big desk. Like, the CEO sits here. Yeah, It's no. like, come on in, sit down. Yeah, my CEO has a desk, but I'm, you know. <laughs> the I boss. I, You're the boss. <laughs> you know. And to think of how far you've come in those 10 years. My goodness. From an idea that some people might have thought was crazy. So many people. So <laughs> many people thought was really nuts um, for like a good three years until I convinced somebody to invest some money <laughs> into the idea. Yeah. And then that was cool. You stayed with it. And look at you now. I did. All right. Should we walk around? Yeah. Let's, right. uh, let's walk around. 
I like the sort of open vibe in here too. It's not yeah. like the closed cubicle. It's people yeah. collaborating in open space. It is. You get a lot more done when you don't have to like set up formal meetings, and yeah. you can just overhear conversations, and um, it's much more like I think modern. Yeah. That like community. Yes. Do you want to see the labs? Can this we go is in like there? one of the. I think the things that make oh, wow. us really special because we have such a stringent quality and safety standard, the honest standard, we um, really, it's kind of like the base of, of what we do and who we are. So having labs where we could actually formulate is incredible and it's also where I get to have fun and be creative. <laughs> Hi ladies. Hi guys, how are you? Mind if we poke our heads in? Yeah, come on in. How's it going? So this is fun. We have. Um, I'm Willie. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi. Hi. How are you? So this is cool. So this is how when you're gonna do a color for a lip, you really have to like mush all the ingredients together, or else there's like lumps, and you don't really right. know like what color it will be. So whenever we're coming up with a new color, we can even do custom colors in here, and then this will be sort of the base that we work from, and then we'll send to our lab to make it at scale. Okay. But um, I get to play in here and like create colors, and it's really cool. That's so fun. And like even my kids can come in and create their own lotions or shampoos with their own scents, and yeah. It's fun to come see mom at work. Yeah, and also like I want them to be excited about science yeah. and chemistry, and what's cooler than having the coolest chemist than to so inspire cool. two young girls. <laughs> we'll let All you right. work. Thank you, yeah. guys. Nice to meet you both. All right. This is the infamous diaper wall. It's so <laughs> random. I don't know. There's something kind of cool about just the idea that we have a wall with like all of our prints. These, and oh my it, gosh. you know, we made over the years so many that it's not come around to here. That's amazing. <laughs> and I'm like, it also reminds me of like where I was at in my life <laughs> for really? the last 10 years. <laughs> right. Each print, you know, represents different stages of life. So this wasn't here. Okay. These were all solid floors. Ah, and so this is what I had it. to, yeah, gotcha. build out with the architect. And, you know, I was like, I want it to be warm. Is it cool of you to think there's a mother somewhere right now changing their baby's diaper, or that one, or that one, or that yeah. one. I mean, the things you guys think of in these rooms. I love it. people's homes. Yeah, I mean, even, like, we wanted to have real people and their um, children on our packaging, so these aren't from photo shoots. These are from real people who take these pictures of their babies in these, like, most special, intimate moments at home, and that's what we put on our packaging. It just feels more natural, more authentic, yeah, right. and, and that's like a friend that works here, that's her best friend, so I do like to do a lot of friends and family. Yeah, yeah. Um, they must be so proud of you, your family, right? Yeah, I it's, mean, this it's is a big pretty deal. cool. We don't test on animals, we test on human <laughs> beings, and they're usually related to me. Mostly family members. <laughs> Mostly right. family members. <laughs> so when I got this space, there were no doors here, and this was all air conditioning units, and this was supposed to be a wall. And I was like, well, I really think it's important to have the indoor-outdoor vibes. I think it just makes for a happier environment yeah. for people. So really homey vibes inside. And then even out here, we have plugs. Uh, we have great Wi-Fi. We have plants. Um, people have lunch out here. And it's just like a nice sort of break from the day. So when you look out over the horizon yeah. for your company, what do you see? What's out there in the future? What else do you want to do with it? We have a lot of growing to do and learning and changing and challenging. I think, you know, our biggest competition is ourselves. And we're just always trying to push the envelope to do better. And that's what I'm hoping we stay inspired to do that. You're doing it. So. Cool. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The general election is right around the corner. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about and you'll instantly get voting rules. See the next big deadline, learn how to take action for your plan, and even help others make their plans. Voting rules have changed since 2020 and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for November. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today.
and good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. fans ready to unlock our true crime mysteries try dateline premium on apple podcasts you'll get early access to originals plus bonus content and everything is ad free so head to apple podcast now to subscribe now tonight with joshua johnson streaming weeknights at eight on nbc news now these days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. You were talking about your childhood, and I didn't realize until I was reading more deeply about you before this, like everything you went through as a kid that kind of colors your perception of what you do here. Mm -hmm. um, not only were you moving around a bunch because mm -hmm. your dad was in the military, mm -hmm. but as you said, you were in the hospital all the yeah. time. I don't think most people fully appreciate what that was like for you. Yeah, I was a loner and had more interactions with adults just because, you know, they're nurses or whatever. Mm. Yeah, I was probably kind of precocious as well because I didn't have the same ideas about myself or my place in the world as other kids because I didn't have a conventional kind of upbringing. Yeah, I felt very alien mm. in many environments and I think that's why when I did make it on a set when I was 12, we were all eccentric and you know everyone was sort of like diagonal. No one was on the straight <laughs> and narrow and no one cared about fitting in. You found your people. I found my people. Yeah, <laughs> but your family hit entertainers as well. They were right? performers, but um, my grandfather was a bookkeeper, accountant for a big corporation. You know, so he had a pretty traditional sort of job, but he played beautiful Spanish classical guitar and he sang and danced on stage with my grandmother. We have like a very artistic family, but no one had done it as a career. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. How do you make that step from this is a thing we do as a family and I'm pretty good at it actually and I like doing it I too. wasn't good at it. No, I was the least talented. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. No, I was, I was shy too. Yeah, I wouldn't even put myself out there. I dreamt about it a lot. I mean, I love movies. I would play out as if I were each character, all the characters, and I would put myself in their shoes and escape from my life, you know? And once you got going, you really got going. When James Cameron puts you front and center mm -hmm. in a network series at 17 years yeah. old, mm -hmm. that's a lot. You had to carry the series. He was series. like, Ace, <laughs> they think you're going to get your ass handed to you. He's like, these guys, they think that you're not going to be able to like deal with the pressure, deal with the long hours, do your own stunts. He's like, what do you say to that? And I was like, tell them to go screw themselves. <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> and he's like, that's right. I believe in you, Ace. And he would always call me Ace. That was his motivational speech. Yeah, I think also, like, they were probably like, the 17 year old girl came from who? Came from mm -hmm. where? Like, right. what if she, like, falls apart? Like, there's a lot riding on this. And it was a big show at the time, and it was expensive. I wasn't allowed to have a sick day. I remember I had pneumonia or the flu or something. Something that gave me made me so sick that I couldn't get out of bed and the producer came over and he was like I came to get you because insurance and I puked on his feet um, <laughs> I crawled to the door I opened the door and I barfed on his feet and I was like I can't yeah I mean that's how tough it was I was in every scene and it was long days and, and long hours kid. and I was a kid yeah. and I don't know any kid that would had that work ethic and so it taught me actually a lot it was one of my greatest lessons just on like showing up and yes. hard work. I was like the first to get there and the last to leave. So what's the role where your life really changes? Is it honey? Is it Dark like, Angel okay. did well, Dark really Angel. changed my yeah. life? And then maybe the Fantastic Four yeah. series because first of all there weren't very many female superheroes oh, yeah. and I was Latina and playing an iconic character. Um, and Stanley says that was his favorite character. Oh, really? Yeah, he loved her. That's probably a turning point for me because I got to sort of like capitalize on the global audience that I had built with Dark Angel and lean in on that 
for the big screen. Mm. And so it really kind of like took it to that next level. As you say, as someone who didn't grow up in like a showbiz family, how did you handle the fame side of it? I think it's hard. I don't know if anyone could ever really be prepared for it. Um, living in a fishbowl. When I had my kids, I didn't want them to carry the anxiety mm. that comes with that. I mean, I lied to them, and I told them that everybody gets followed by strangers. And it wasn't until like my daughter was like in second grade <laughs> that she realized that. Uh, she was like, Mom, why are you on the cover of a magazine? She, she was like, it was it. so embarrassing. <laughs> Someone like brought it to school. And I was like, yeah. And she's like, why? Why? It's why are you doing this? And I was like, oh. <laughs> Cats out of the bag. Yeah. But she wasn't, I don't think she really realized that honest wasn't my only job. Right. Because I never exposed them to it. Right. I don't like have pictures of myself around and I don't talk about it. And so they lived a pretty kind of like sheltered ish life. Yeah about it. And do you, you guys, you and Cash, it seems like have worked hard to sort of keep that as normal as it can be. As normal as it can be. It's not normal. It's no. weird. And I try to talk to my kids about like how fortunate we are. Um, and there are so many people who, you know, are struggling and, and how grateful they need to be for their life. So then they don't get too caught up in any of it, either feeling sorry for themselves because they live in a fishbowl. And then on the flip side, just being grateful for their life so they can just be kind and generous people. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals plus bonus content. And everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. A masked killer takes aim and fires. A fatal attraction that leads investigators to turn towards their own. Internal Affairs, a new podcast from Dateline. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. A masked killer takes aim and fires. A fatal attraction that leads investigators to turn towards their own. Internal Affairs, a new podcast from Dateline. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight and expert analysis. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. So as you move forward, how are you going to look at this balance that you've struck the last 10 years of Honest and your acting career? You've got some stuff booked that's coming up, also yeah. executive producer of a new yeah. series on Netflix. How are you looking at that? Producing is something that I've always wanted to do, and I think more doing more behind the camera is really exciting as well. And then I feel like I just barely scratched the surface from a creative standpoint for myself as an actress. I kind of just wanted the check to clear, to be honest. I was pretty mm. transactional with Hollywood. I was like, will it pay? Is it gonna be a global thing? Is it gonna keep me in this sort of like relevant space for a global audience? But it wasn't me fulfilling my creative kind of needs. So now I'm like, I have a lot more confidence as well. I was really insecure. And I think mm. I kept it pretty surface because I was like, you know, I'm just gonna hit my mark and I'm gonna show up on time and right. I'm gonna be professional and I, it's gonna fulfill this purpose. But now I'm, you know, I'm excited about exploring more in Hollywood and entertainment and telling stories. And there's so many different platforms now. So there's a lot less, I think, weight on uh, your opening weekend like it used to be. Right. I love how many women get to be, you know, behind the camera, in front of the camera, telling stories and the diversity of the streamers and, and where content can be made. and. 
it's it's awesome. It's interesting. You almost can kind of like relaunch yourself. Like you've been doing this for ten years, and here she comes back to Hollywood, and she's directing or producing or taking yeah. on new kinds of roles. So yeah, it's exciting. I mean, after COVID, man, I'm very grateful to be here. Yeah, and not like it's gone away, but I think just reflecting on the last couple of years, if we get to wake up and and be here then let's do everything we can to make it joy, just pure joy <laughs> and fun and happiness. Amen you know. to that. Yeah. Well, thank you for hosting us. Congrats on 10 years. Thank you. Here's to many, many more. Thank you Thanks, so much. Thanks, Jessica. Welcome to Pop Start Plus. I'm Dylan Dreyer, filling in for Carson again. And coming up on today's show, Kyle Richards. She's reprising her role in the original Halloween in the franchise's latest installment. And she gave us a real Housewives update. Plus, the one and only Victoria Beckham and her visit to Studio 1A. And later, a treasure of a clip from our vault as we honor the late and legendary Angela Lansbury. But first, Jacob Sobroff has today's Pop Start. First up... This week, actress Elizabeth Debicki was spotted shooting the sixth and final season of Netflix's hit royal series in Mallorca, Spain. Final? F Wait, this is it. Come on, here we Jumping go. Jumping really ahead. Sad. Guys, I know. So in the pics, she's seen channeling Princess wow. Diana's, look at this, iconic fashion wow. with a belted red dress similar to the one worn by the late royal during a 1997 visit to Northwick Park and St. Mark's Hospital. The Vicky was photographed alongside her two young crown co-stars, mm. Rufus Kappa right there, who plays Prince William, and Will Powell as younger brother Harry. The tenant actors will portray the iconic People's Princess for the final two seasons of the series. Oh. Season five of The Crown starts streaming November 9th on Netflix. You got some time. We have two more seasons. That's right. Yeah, that's okay. right. But they're already, they, they, they're ahead of us. Yeah. Okay. I'm just like going through the stages of grief. I don't <laughs> think it should ever We got go. time. We got time. Yeah. Coming up next, Louis Armstrong. A new documentary about the founding father of jazz is headed to Apple TV Plus oh. later this month. It's going to be so good. We have an exclusive sneak peek for you. The project titled Louis Armstrong's Black and Blues will follow his historic career in music and his life off the stage as he became a key figure in the civil rights movement. Plus, the director had access to never-before-heard home recordings and personal letters, which will be voiced by rapper Nas in the movie. Watch. Anybody who has uttered a sound on American radio, it's because of Louis Armstrong's innovations. He never would come out publicly, but at home he had his opinions. I've heard recordings of Pops just talking. He understood there was a battle in this country. I don't have no flag other than a black flag. That's right. There's a rumor that you invented scat singing. It came to me just like that. <laughs> oh, so good. Ah, it looks so, Gotta so good. It. Blue oh. Armstrong's Black and Blues is out October 28th on, in select theaters and on Apple TV+. Plus. You can watch the full trailer, by the way, by heading over to today.com. Go check it out right now. Yes. Speaking of great music documentaries, we've got a couple more for you. Next up, we are talking about Johnny Cash. Oh. The country blues icon is the subject of a big screen project due in theaters later this, later this year. And the movie's called Johnny Cash. I love that music. The Redemption of an American Icon. It is set to explore the legend legendary singer's journey with God, with religion, through the use of more than 100 tapes that he himself recorded for his biography. Plus, the film sat down with, uh, for interviews with members of his family, some of the biggest names in music. Here's a peek. There was not one person that didn't respect Johnny Cash. He sort of lived in his own atmosphere. His unapologetic attitude, that's what made Johnny Cash cool. He was darkness and light, living in the same body, and one fought against the other. He wanted to be the biggest thing in the world. And he became the biggest thing in the world. And then he stepped back and he said, that's not all there is. There's no lonelier place on earth for a man to be than separated from God. He faced himself. Mm -hmm. The redemption of an American icon will be in theaters for a very limited run. You can catch it December 5th to the 7th. I'm going to go see it. Yeah, me too. All right, one more music grade who is going to be telling their story on the screen sometime soon. Lizzo. Oh. Yesterday, the To Be Loved singer announced new details for her own doc titled Love Lizzo. It's going to be on HBO Max. They'll debut it on Thanksgiving Day. So after you fill up on your turkey and your stuffing, you can kick back with the Grammy winner. Love Lizzo was shot over a three-year period that spans the singer's Cause I Love You world tour, the pandemic, and the recording of her latest album, Special. 
can't wait to check that one out. Uh, and finally, guys, The Joy Luck Club, a sequel's in the works for the groundbreaking drama, actually, based on Amy Tan's best-selling novel. This is what Variety says. Joy Luck Club 2 will continue the four families' multi-generational story as the women embark on the next phase of their lives. The sequel's set to show the mothers from the first film stepping into the role of grandma and their daughters becoming mothers, introducing audiences to a new generation and their relationship with heritage, love, and identity. The magazine also reports that original cast members are in talks to return to their roles. The original 1993 film is credited, of course, with paving the way for Asian and female representation all across Hollywood. No word yet on when production is scheduled to begin for that one. Good pop star. Yeah, this is like couch potatoes I rejoice. So yeah. wow. Everything we need to watch. Love it. Good stuff. Exactly. Now to the reason we call this show Popstart Plus. We have even more headlines for you. First up, Spirited. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Yesterday, Apple TV Plus released the first trailer for Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell's highly anticipated holiday movie. Here's the setup. It's a musical comedy based on the classic Charles Dickens story, A Christmas Carol. Take a look. What is all of this? I am your ghost of Christmas present. Like a Christmas carol? <laughs> What do you, do you think I'm going to be all intrigued by what's behind the door? I... Not even a little bit curious? Damn it! <laughs> there was this little sick kid. What did they call him? It was Tiny Tim. No, no, no. Sweet kid, one crutch. No. Nope. Little Larry. No, Tiny Tim. Micro Mike, super small Steve. Holy. <laughs> Cannot wait for that. Rounding out the cast with Farrell and Reynolds is none other than Octavia Spencer. Spirited premieres in theaters on November 11th and on Apple TV Plus the following week. And finally, Jay Leno. You know the phrase, with great power comes great responsibility. Well, yesterday, the former Tonight Show host visited the Kelly Clarkson show and revealed how he handled having a direct line to President Obama when he was in the Oval Office. Take a look. When you come from a small town, you have the same idiot friends your whole life that you grew up with, you know? So I'm telling my friends, you know, I got Obama's cell phone. Let's call him up. You know, I go, I go we're not going to call him. He go, you don't have it. Nuh-uh, uh-huh, nuh-uh, uh-huh. I'm a, like 45-year-old man. We're going, nuh-uh, uh-huh, nuh-uh. OK. Mm. So finally, my friend said, no, you don't have it. I said, first of all, it's probably shut off since he's president. Well, if he's shut off, let's call it. I said, what time? It's 3 o'clock in California. Okay, it's 12 o'clock. All right, I dial the number. I hear, Brock here. Oh, Mr. President? Yeah, it's Jay Leno. What can I do for you, Jay? Uh, should I throw this number away? Good idea, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> what a gutsy prank phone call. Uh, certainly I've ever heard of. At least Jay got to keep his street cred with his buddies. That's important, right? And those are your Pop Start Plus headlines. Just ahead, Kyle Richards on The Real Housewives and returning to the Halloween franchise. The general election is right around the corner. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about, and you'll instantly get voting rules. See the next big deadline, learn how to take action for your plan, and even help others make their plans. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for November. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. I love you too. Hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content. And everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. For breaking news in our changing world, Download the NBC News app. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. I love you too. <laughs> now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. 
Welcome back to Popstar Plus. As a child actress, Kyle Richards rose to fame through her appearances on Little House on the Prairie and in the original Halloween. Well, 44 years later, she's a member of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and returning to her Halloween role in Halloween Ends. Today is Donna Farazan caught up with Kyle to talk about both. I am so excited to be sitting down with Kyle Richards, who is reprising her role in the new movie, Halloween Ends. I was certain that I saw him watching me. For those who don't know much about Halloween, how would you describe Halloween Ends? I really enjoyed the story behind Halloween Ends and where they decided to take it. It's really exciting, and the acting was really incredible. I, th I, I thought everybody did an amazing job. I'm actually so excited for this, which is out of character for me, but I've watched all of the Halloween movies. Uh, they're not, they can be scary, but they're not too crazy scary. I think they're really scary. Okay. I mean, even as a little girl, I wasn't scared making the movie, but I'm scared when I see the movie and I see myself in that situation. So you are playing Lindsay Wallace, which you've played multiple times over the series. What is it about the character and about the series that makes you want to come back? Well, I, you know, I'm just so grateful to be a part of this franchise for all of these decades, mm -hmm. starting out as a little girl. And over these years, my relationship with Jamie has grown and we've become closer. So to be able to play these characters together all of these years later is just something that, you know, I'm so appreciative of. In July, there was a crossover of two of your worlds collided when Jamie Lee Curtis came on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. This has now become a medical emergency. Oh, this is listen, all bad. Listen, oh, hey, hey, back off. Sutton, put your hand no, you up. She has glue everywhere. Aunt Jamie's got it. Under control. Thank you, Auntie Jamie. What was that moment like to have her come onto your set? It was really fun and exciting. I was a little nervous because this is not a world that she's a part of. And she walked into my house and the first thing she did was start talking to the cameraman in the lens. And I was like, dang it, we don't do that. We can't look in the camera. She's like, I don't care. I'm breaking all the rules. I'm like, but they won't use any of this footage. Like, we're working now. Um, and then I had to explain to her, like, you know, this is shot in real time. She's like, this is a Mother's Day lunch. Why is there a Christmas tree? I'm like, because it's December. So she was very entertained throughout that day, I have to say. She was like, now I get it. Now I get why so many people watch your show. The season finale of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills dropped. Oh my God. Did either one of you leak to the press any of this information about Kathy? No, I no. don't know how to do that. Tell I, I her. Don't do that. No. No. It was someone who works for you. Interesting. A publicist. There was a lot of juice that I want to get into. But I wonder, is it hard for you that the juice and the drama that we are entertained by is in part part of your family struggles? Definitely affects me a lot. This season I found especially difficult. I had to stop watching, which I've never done in 12 years. So I actually went to the reunion not seeing everything. Um, for the first time ever because I felt like that's what I needed to do for my mental health and um, at the end of the day We have a lot of fun, too I think that gets lost sometimes and um, I wouldn't be here after 12 years if it wasn't also fun You were also not only you but you were also at odds with Erica Jane about her lawsuit struggles People died and the families are left in the aftermath. You're not showing any any compassion is there going to be a little bit of reconciliation between you two at the reunion? All the stuff that we dealt with in the show this season, um, we do address at the reunion. I will say not everything gets resolved. I don't want to sit here for a toast. Can I leave? Doug, what do you want to do here? Kyle's a wreck. This year, nobody went anywhere. There was uh, no cast photo. No group hug, and so kind of left on a weird note, and that was disappointing. So what does that mean for next season? I think it's too soon to tell. 
Your daughters and your husband, Mauricio, have a new reality show coming out soon. Is there anything you could tell us about it? It's called Buying Beverly Hills on Netflix, and here the girls grew up on the show with me, but they've never been like one to be front and center. And it was very funny seeing my daughters, you know, coming through my closets, you know, <laughs> grabbing outfits. I'm like, the whole show is gonna be things I've worn on the Housewives. And obviously I've learned a lot after doing a reality show this many years. I just kept telling my daughters, never say anything you don't want to say or anything you don't mean you know don't ever get pushed into something that you're not comfortable with stand your ground no matter what before we wrap up I just want to know how how do you spend Halloween well my eldest daughter Farah is born on Halloween so we've always made a big deal about Halloween every year and we always did a huge party as she got older called Farrowween um, but the last one we did for her really did me in so like the past couple years I've had to take a break so now it's just decorating my house I just envision you always give out the king size bars you know, that's what I envision your house. house. <laughs> if they were to come, that's nobody, what would happen. Because of, yeah, they, nobody comes to my house, which is also sad. So then I have to go somewhere because I like to see all, you know, the I know, so, I know. You know, I, I wear like the typical mom outfit, which is like cat ears and like mm -hmm. a cat suit and go to dinner. <laughs> I mean, it's so I wear like, that too. It's just like going to the like door, a little get sexy. Your little cat ears. Yeah. Just add cat ears to this and you're good to yeah, go. There you go. See, that's probably what I'll be wearing <laughs> on Halloween. We should mention Halloween ends, opens in theaters, and will be streaming exclusively on Peacock starting on Friday. All right, coming up next, we are spicing up your life with the delightful Victoria Beckham. You get one beautiful so life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Love you too. <laughs> now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. The general election is right around the corner. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about, and you'll instantly get voting rules. See the next big deadline, learn how to take action for your plan, and even help others make their plans. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for November. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. A masked killer takes aim at fires. A fatal attraction that leads investigators to turn towards their own. Internal Affairs, a new podcast from Dateline. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We're back here on Pop Start Plus. We always love hearing from this next guest. Spice Girls fans, get ready. Victoria Beckham stopped by Studio 1A to update us on her family and her many, many projects. Fashion, beauty, and pop icon Victoria Beckham. She kind of does it all. Yeah, she <laughs> always seems so posh, so put yeah. together. The co-founder well. and creative director of Victoria Beckham beauty and her own clothing line and we just want to say before we begin we've tried out your makeup yeah we're it was, wearing it we are totally into it it must have been a fun thing to create well firstly you are both glowing ladies <laughs> i have to say you look gorgeous this morning <laughs> so we were fishing for that yeah oh, it really is a dream mm. for me to be creating a luxurious fashion and mm. beauty house of the future is mm. is a dream. I feel so blessed and so mm. lucky to have a job that I just love so much. Yeah, you, you know what I love about you, Victoria, because you are posh. We know yeah. that. And then you know you always have that like mm -hmm. like elegant look about you. Here you are in Paris, walking the runway. Come on, it's your. You had a moment, mm -hmm. and I loved it because you were mm -hmm. totally overwhelmed with gratitude and joy. 
in that moment. You, yeah. I think you said you were like hoping to have some like moment where you're just like doing the catwalk and here you are. Yeah. What were you thinking uh, in these moments? Do you know, I was so emotional because it's such a big deal mm. for me to have a show in Paris, it was a real highlight mm. of my career. I had my family there, mm. I had my friends there, and I felt so proud of my team. Mm. I really did. And I was planning on coming out and having a very yeah. cool picture taken, mm. and I just broke down <laughs> when I saw my husband and my children, who mm. are so supportive of what I do. I was just very, very happy. You know, it's so awesome. You're surrounded by all these people who love and adore you. Speaking of your uh, adorable husband, we were just in London for the Queen's funeral, and in that long winding uh, line, there was your husband waiting hours and hours and hours just to pay his respects. Uh, tell us about that, that decision. You know, David felt very, very humbled by the experience. Mm. It was something that he really wanted to do, and he is so happy that he did it. He said the mm -hmm. experience was something that he, he struggles to even express. Mm. It meant so much to him. He was in that queue for 14 hours. Mm. He said he met some really amazing people. Yeah. He was buying them all donuts. <laughs> he said, I met some great, great people, uh -huh. and he's just so happy he did it. Mm. I mean, it's just amazing. You guys, by the way, have you been married 23 years? 23 years. Four to... kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of your, your daughter, your son, just got married. Brooklyn. Brooklyn just yeah. got married. Oh. Uh, who, by yeah. the way, cooked here once with I us. Know. He did such a great job. I know, thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was a beautiful wedding. And as a mother, to see my son so happy um, means so much. Mm. What more can you ask for? You can't ask for one more thing. And what about, I mean, you're still a parent, which is kind of interesting. I always wonder about, you know, when you parent grown kids. Yeah. What is that like for you in this moment? Do you know, I think that the kids grow up so, so quickly. Yeah. And it's about cherishing every moment. And mm -hmm. we're a very close family. It's all about communication. Mm -hmm. um, and being present as a parent. I love to work. I love what I do mm -hmm. in fashion and beauty. But being a parent, being a good mom mm -hmm. is my number one job. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> they're amazing. They work hard. Mm -hmm. They're good, sweet, kind human beings. And mm -hmm. I think that that's what you want to do as a parent. Yeah, well, definitely. But it's not easy to pull off when both parents are in the mm -hmm. public eye and mm -hmm. international celebrities. Like, how did you yeah. keep them grounded? You know, I think it's just being close and having good mm -hmm. family around us, my parents and, and David's parents. And, mm -hmm. you know, just talking to them about everything. Mm. You know, we always say that this is an environment where we can talk and mm. communicate. Open. Yeah, we're very, very present. You know, yeah. the kids are, they're happy, hardworking, respectful kids. And mm -hmm. that's what you want. How delightful to have Victoria here. All right, coming up next, a look back with the late, great Angela Lansbury opening up about how she first got into acting. Stay with us. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight and expert analysis. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. A masked killer takes aim at fires. A fatal attraction that leads investigators to turn towards their own. Internal Affairs, a new podcast from Dateline. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back. The talented Angela Lansbury passed away this week, just a few days shy of her 97th birthday. She was a five-time Tony Award winner, and in her honor, we pulled a special moment from our vault from 1980, where she spoke about the start of what would become an incredible career.
Sweeney Todd is about to make a national tour with the woman we're talking about, the star Angela Lansbury, the star who has won the hearts of audiences around the world. Now, how's wow, that? what an intro. That's pretty good, huh? <laughs> I should say. You now, the artists will pass among you, and if you'll just give whatever you can, we'd appreciate it. <laughs> Angela Lansbury, you have been a star for a long time, and you are a singer, but you are an actress. What is acting? Well, what is acting? Acting is kind of uh, putting yourself away in a closet and emerging as somebody else. And that's really what acting is about. Don't ask me how you do it. That's that, but that is the process that has to take place. Don't ask me how you do it. Is it, a, is it instinctive? You can't learn to be an actress? No, I don't believe you can learn to be an actress. I think if you're an actress, or let's say a character actress, in other words, somebody who wants to become another character other than themselves, you can't learn how to do it. You can learn how to do it better, but you, you have to have an instinct for the game. You know what I mean? Well, if you had an instinct, how early did you recognize that instinct? I'd say I was about nine or ten years old, or maybe younger even, then I realized that I liked, enjoyed being somebody else. And I guess uh, it showed. Did My it mother sh realized it. Yeah, you know? your mother. You had a very unusual mother. I mean this in the nicest way. Wasn't it sort of a, a gypsy situation? I mean, your mother really wanted you to be an actress? Well, I wouldn't say she was like Rose, no. She was not a pushing, uh, you know, belligerent, kind of frustrated person herself who wanted to realize her ambitions through me, her daughter. However, she was an actress, and she recognized that uh, her little tot had showed signs of, of uh, having the same talent, you know. So she did encourage me, and as I said, she nudged me along, and she, uh, she just put things in my way, and I just picked them up. And, and did them, you know. When she put things in your way, you mean an obstacle or an opportunity? No, an opportunity, like learning to dance, going to dancing school, taking elocution lessons, all of those um, things that you have to pick up, you know, before you can really become an actress. Where did all this happen? In England, when I was a kid. And then later on, of course, in America. Most of my training, incidentally, was in America. Was there one big break in your life? Was there a turning point, a fork in the road when Angela Lansbury changed from tot with promise to a person who thought she could really become a professional actress? Oh, very definitely, yes. After all, I had the greatest break in the world when I was 17 years old, and I was signed by MGM to play the Maiden Gaslight. That's the and, with Charles Boyer and Ingrid yeah, Bergman. And I mean, that was, a, that was really a fork in the road, because one fork went off to wrapping packages in a department store, and the other fork went off to a job at $500 a week at MGM. So you can imagine what a tremendous upheaval, what joy that brought you only to 17, my mother and me. 17 at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And you got an Academy Award nomination for Supporting Actress. Yes. At that age. Yeah. It was your first film? It was Boggling. Yes. That's, Absolutely. What do you do for an encore when you get an What do you do, right? Huh? Well, then you get a wonderful movie like The Picture of Dorian Gray, in which I sang Little Yellow Bird, which is very dear to my heart because it, it was such a... It was such a... It was so in opposition to what I had done in Gaslight. And it showed this other side of my fledgling ability, shall we say. And yet it, it uh, was the beginning of me being able to play a variety of roles rather than just always heavies. When you were a little child, your mother gave you singing and dancing lessons. When did you have your first opportunity to sing professionally in, in a major way? Was it the Sondheim Show? Yeah, except I did, I did sing in a couple of movies, but the Sondheim Show, you're absolutely right. When I got a wonderful letter from Arthur Lawrence saying, have you ever sung, dear Miss Lansbury, Mr. Stephen Sondheim and I are writing a musical. We will be very interested in you appearing in it. Have you ever sung? You know, well, I immediately picked up the pen, and I wasn't a letter writer in those days. I've s since become one. Uh, and I wrote a letter back saying, Dear Mr. Lawrence, I was terribly awed, you see, because after all, he'd written Gypsy and uh, West Side Story, and I, I was so boggled with the idea that this, this great man had written to me and said, Could I sing? That I wrote back and said, I believe I can carry a tune, and uh, I would like to audition, you see. So they, he and Steve came out to the coast, and I did audition for them, and I sang A Foggy Day in London Town. Not very well, but loudly. That was, the, that was the thing in those days. You had to sing loud, because we weren't all mic then. Like you know, now. we had to uh, compete with an orchestra. Well, that started an association with Sondheim, because in the last year and a half, you've been a sensation in Sweeney Todd, music and lyrics by right. Sondheim, in right. which you play this woman who takes people, puts them in a grinder, and makes meat pies, which is why nobody ate in the green room today, knowing <laughs> you were coming. The Danish looked a little odd. I know what you mean. Do you well, like playing that role? It's almost an opera. Well, it is, well, yes and no. It, it, it is an opera, but it is also very clear what's happening. Visually, I think it's one of the most uh, tantalizingly exciting 
uh, stage presentations in many, many years. And uh, it, may be, it may be sung, but what we're saying, it's recitative, and it's got some wonderful songs in it that aren't just arias. There are no arias. There are a couple at the beginning, you know, with Sweeney Todd. But personally, I sing a bunch of wonderfully funny and comical songs. And, uh, you know, Have a Little Priest, I think, is one of the really classic songs of all time. And I mean, they, they, they use these uh, customers uh, for the pies. It's, it's a matter of expediency, it's really. I mean, and that's the way she, at, she approaches it. Uh, she is a totally amoral, wonderful, you know, grist of the mill character off the London streets. And she has so much humor in her that, uh, well, it sends me up to play her. I really enjoy it. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And good luck on your national tour of Thank you. Sweeney Todd. Thank Angela you very Vandenberg. much for having me on. Such grace from Angela. We are sending our love to her family, friends, and everyone she touched. So thanks for being here today for Popstar Plus. We'll be back tomorrow, same time, same place. Have a great day. Do you see this? See this pizza? You want to eat this pizza? Too bad, I'm going to. <laughs> I'm Sama Dada. I'm a cookbook author and recipe developer in the plant-based food scene, which is becoming more innovative every day. I'm on a mission to see how startups, restaurants, and chefs are changing the way we see and eat plants. And I can't wait to show you how to bring more delicious dishes into your kitchen. Who doesn't just love ooey, gooey, and totally decadent cheese? I know you do. Americans truly can't get enough. In fact, we've tripled our cheese consumption since the 70s. Today, the average person here eats a whopping 35 pounds of cheese a year. 35! So it's no surprise that cheese is usually one of the toughest things to give up if you're ditching dairy. But I've got some good news for you. These days, there are a lot of tasty options out there when it comes to vegan cheese, and I'm determined to explore them all. Well, maybe not all, but I've discovered a few really, really good ones. I'm checking out a new type of pizza shop serving up killer pies. Then, I'll be using cashews to make an irresistible dairy-free dip of my own. But first, I'm headed to Riverdale, an artisanal cheese shop making its mark on the plant-based cheese world. Michaela Grobe is the owner and cheesemonger of Riverdale, a vegan cheese shop on Manhattan's Lower East Side. It's the only shop in New York City that exclusively features dairy-free artisanal cheeses. Michaela, thank you for having me. I love a plant-based cheese moment. This is very exciting for me. Tell me about what inspired you to start Riverdale. Basically, I love cheese. Um, I love animals. I became vegan for 40 animals, basically, and when I then started looking around for cheese. I found that, you know, it was, it was out there, but you couldn't really access it easily. Michaela's quest for better vegan cheese started a decade ago, when it was still really hard to find dairy-free cheese that was actually good. While working a high-profile job in the corporate world, Michaela saw an opportunity to open a new type of store. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if there would be one place just like any other tea shop where everything's vegan. And that's kind of where the idea came from. She began reading books on vegan cheesemaking and took classes with acclaimed vegan chefs. On the weekends, Michaela went through a lot of trial and error in her home kitchen, while also crafting a plan to start her own food business. I still had my corporate job, and at one point I was like, okay, I think it's time for me to leave the corporate world and really do something about it. I really thought, I want, to, I want to try it. If it, if it fails, it fails, right? But at least I tried it. With enough money saved, she left her job in 2015 and opened Riverdale, named after her two pets, a dog named River and her cat, Fidel. But Michaela's mission to make vegan cheese more accessible wasn't just a passion project. It was a pivotal time for a booming business. In 2017, vegan cheese sales hovered around $294 million. By 2022, that figure is projected to reach nearly 600 million. That's a 100% increase. Are you trying to mimic 
you know, dairy cheese? Or are you kind of creating something in your own line, in your own world? Yeah. Um, or are you just trying to replicate the experience of buying cheese? Yeah. It's a little bit of, of everything. It's the experience. It's a product that people know. Uh, that looks like a brie, that looks like a, a gouda. But then there are also other cheeses that have no equivalent in the dairy world. Riverdale's blue cheese uses the same fungus that creates the iconic navy marbling in the dairy version. But the shop's Vitopian is a cashew and soy-based cheese with a unique texture that's semi-firm yet creamy. The way I like to explain our customers is to not look for like, for like um, imitation. It's the same as if you would make a a gouda from a cow's milk and from a goat's milk. It has the same techniques, the same cultures, but the end product is very different. So it's the same if your base is a cashew nut. The end product's different, but it's still a cheese. In my, my view, it is. Who do you want to be eating this cheese? I mean, we definitely have a lot of vegan customers, but we also have people that are vegetarian, um, lactose intolerant, so whereas we do obviously speak to the vegan community, um, for me it was also important that we reach out and connect with the non-vegan community. You're targeting the cheese curious. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that it's difficult to make the switch because people are afraid of like, oh my god, what am I going to eat? Michaela has the cheesy answer to that question. In the shop's kitchen, she showed me how to make a few of her handcrafted cheeses. Okay, Michaela, what are we making today? So we're actually making a feta today. It's going to be a very salty and crumbly and firm one, which is perfect for salads. Vegan cheesemongers use a variety of ingredients to mimic the taste and texture of dairy cheese. Common bases include a combo of nuts, vegetable oils, and soy products. So for this one, we're actually using tofu. This tofu has been frozen first, and then we kind of squeeze out all the liquid so it becomes very dry. Michaela uses firm tofu to create a sturdy feta. It allows the cheese to uniformly slice and dice, but also crumble, just like the traditional Greek cheese. For flavor, Michaela adds Himalayan salt, red wine vinegar, garlic powder, and Greek oregano. Then there are two types of fats. So you're using coconut oil here. Why are mm -hmm. you using coconut and not a different kind of oil or fat? Yeah, I mean, coconut oil um, firms up once it's chilled, mm -hmm. so it really helps with just making the cheese firmer. All right, so I've got some olive oil here. Mm -hmm. And that's just olive oil with a little bit of oregano in it, and that's just to get a little bit more flavor. And I'm just using a, like a, a tablespoon or something like that. Okay, so we're ready to blend our feta. Mm -hmm. Everyone's gonna become friends in here. Mm -hmm. What are we yeah. looking for for it to be done, and how long are we processing for? So we're looking for a very smooth, almost shiny kind of consistency. Even when I think it's done, I usually like to give it another minute or two just to be on the, uh, on the safe side. You can't overblend this. Michaela scrapes down the processor every minute or so to ensure the mixture reaches a smooth, creamy consistency. Then it's transferred into cheese molds. We made two flavors, one plain and one with an olive tapenade center. The cheeses sit in the fridge for two days to firm up. I made some ahead already, oh, really? so we don't have to wait overnight and we can taste them right away. Oh, exciting. So this is what it looks like when you turn it upside down. What? So this is one with the um, tapenade layer, oh. and here is one with uh, sun-dried tomatoes. Wait, this is crazy how firm it is. Yeah. Can we eat them? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Will you have some with me? I wait, want to so, try this one. Yeah, you wait. try that one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Mm. So it's nice and salty. Wow, that's crazy. Crumbly, but it doesn't taste anything like the other uh, the tofu that we use as a base. It feels very light, but still like dense enough to mm -hmm. feel like, oh wow, like I'm eating something that could really stand up to a dairy yeah. cheese. Yeah. This is so delicious. My mind is blown. You have so many different types of cheeses. Can we try some mm. other ones too? Oh, absolutely. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. 
the day's biggest political stories with trusted insight and expert analysis. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Love you too. <laughs> Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. At Riverdale, a vegan cheese shop in New York City, Owner Michaela Grobe makes two cheeses in-house. She also imports over a dozen varieties from across the country and around the world. I'm genuinely freaking out because this all looks like real cheese. <laughs> like, talk to me about what we're seeing here. So this one is another one of our house-made cheeses. It's a, it's a blue cheese type and it's aged for about well, two to three months. It's definitely more on the funkier side. The uh, base ingredient here is cashews. Then we have a brie style here. The cultures that are being used for, to create this nice fluffy rind mm. is the same as you would use on a dairy application. This one's uh, from Texas and it actually has um, cashews and rice flour. Oh, what kind of cheese is this? So that's a smoky aged cheddar style, very nice and firm and very strong and uh, deep flavor. And here we have one that's made in New York and it's made from macadamia nuts and hemp. Mm. And it has a little bit, little bit of a kick, a little bit of a spice, something like along the lines of a pepper jack. I'm very excited to try them. How are we gonna assemble it? Can we make like a little cute cheese platter or something Oh yeah, like absolutely. We have a few things that will go really nicely with each of those cheeses. Nice. Riverdale also carries many cheese board essentials, including crackers, jams, and vegan charcuterie. Absolutely. I would have a party just to serve this. It was almost time to dive in, but you already know, my camera always eats first. I think I have to start with the pepper jack because yeah, I love you should. spice. Absolutely. So it is a bit spicy. I'm okay. Yeah, especially the I'm, crust is, is gonna be spicy. I'm ready for it. Whoa. Yeah. Once I get started, I just can't stop. Vegan blue with strawberries, anyone? Cheers. Cheers. Oh my god. <laughs> That doesn't make sense. And we had to pair the brie with pear. Michaela, you have changed my world today. This is so <laughs> exciting. Um, Great. And I just can't thank you enough. This is incredible. And I, I hope people really see all the amazing things we're doing with vegan cheese. I'm really happy to have so many more cheese makers. We find so many more cheese makers like every month. There's a new one we start working with. Thank you so much. If you ever need more tasters, I'll be sure to Just call like yes. hit me up. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll be here. <laughs> I've saved a little room for my next cheesy stop. A New York pizza shop firing up plant based pies for their screaming fans. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load every single morning. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, 
download the NBC News app. The general election is right around the corner. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about, and you'll instantly get voting rules. See the next big deadline, learn how to take action for your plan, and even help others make their plans. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for November. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. I live in Brooklyn, and there are few foods that scream New York City more than pizza. But is pizza really pizza without cheese? Vegan cheeses may be delicious, but capturing the melty, gooey goodness of mozzarella is tough. And that's obviously essential for a perfect pie. Meet one of my favorite vegan pizza spots, Screamers. Come on. Are you kidding? Is it a joke? It's not a joke. It's vegan. <laughs> Open since 2016, Screamers is similar to many iconic slice spots all over the city. Head chef Joy Strang has worked at Screamers for four years. She developed popular pies on the menu, like the Truffle Scream, a pizza covered in oyster and cremini mushrooms, plant-based parm, arugula, and a drizzle of fragrant truffle oil. Tell me about the inspiration behind Screamers. I mean, the inspiration was literally just that. It was a bunch of vegans sitting around wanting to um, have a really good slice of New York pizza, and thus Screamers was born, you know? What was your background before Screamers? Uh, so I spent a lot of time as a chef for a Mexican restaurant, and I've also worked in American fine dining. But I also find that like, cooking vegan food, you just take the same methods that you use for cooking anything and just apply it to vegan ingredients. Screamer serves all types of pies, from classics like pepperoni and a fully loaded supreme, to mashup flavors, like a Reuben pie topped with spiced seitan and Thousand Island dressing. They have two locations in Brooklyn and a dedicated following on social media. How far has somebody traveled to get some Screamers pizza? We get people from all over. Brazil um, is notable, uh, Germany. And I always feel badly for people that are traveling from out of town and they come here because then they eat the pizza and then they have to think about the pizza when they go home. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm really sorry for They you know. ruin people. Yeah. What do you say, Joy, to people who are skeptical of vegan cheese? Because obviously cheese is a huge part of pizza. I'd say, honestly, that's probably our number one challenge is people come in and they're like, oh, I don't know about the cheese, but vegan cheese has come a long way. You know, um, before there weren't as many options, but I think there's so much more focus and emphasis on making things more delicious these days as opposed to just having a alternative. Screamers uses a specific vegan cheese to replicate the texture of dairy cheese. So we use a uh, BioLife mozzarella. Oh, nice. Yeah. So we've tried many, many cheeses, but this seems to be the one with the best smell, the best, best mouthfeel, I think. What is it made out of? Coconut oil and potato starch is the base of it. So again, it's very allergy friendly, um, no soy, no nuts. Screamers also makes two cheeses in-house, an almond-based Parmesan and an ultra creamy ricotta. Today we're gonna make our almond ricotta, um, which goes on a lot of our four pizzas. Yay, I'm yeah. excited. Okay, so I see you soak the almonds to soften them, but they're also blanched as well. There's no skin on them. So why is that happening there? Yeah, because the skin tends to, one, um, give you like a little bit of a, a different mouthfeel. It's, um, it's a little bit, uh, yeah, a little bit grainy and also just for color purposes. Okay, should we get started? What are we doing first? So we're gonna put in our um, soaked and blanched almonds into the Roboku. All right, and then okay. next we're gonna go with our salt. Lactic acid goes in there next. Why are we using lactic acid here? So it gives it a little bit of a tang, you know, that um, you know every cheese tends to have. We achieve that by putting the lactic acid in there. All right. Yeah. And then this is the blended oil. It's a little bit of vegetable oil and a little bit of um, olive oil. And then we're just gonna snap the lid on here. The mixture blends for a couple minutes. Once everything gets creamy, it's time for a taste. Are we done? Yeah, we're looks done. It's delicious. You want to give it a try? I really would. All right. I thought you never asked. Yeah, for sure. 
Mmm. Pretty good, right? Very creamy like ricotta. Joy, it feels wrong to have cheese without the pizza. Sure. So what can we put this almond ricotta on top of? Well, we're gonna show you one of our most popular pizzas, like we mentioned before, the buffalo cauliflower. Um, yeah, so we'll use the cheese that we just made for that. All right, what are we starting with? So um, this is the, our dough. We make all of our dough in-house. I'd say the most challenging part about making pizza at home is probably stretching the dough, mm -hmm. right? So you want to start by flouring both sides so it doesn't stick. Um, and then we're going to press out all of the air bubbles. And while pressing out the air bubbles, you're kind of like keeping it in this circle shape. So it makes it a little bit easier to, uh, to stretch and still be formed into this like perfect, beautiful circle. All right, so now that we've gotten our air bubbles out here, we're gonna flip it over on our hand and start the stretching process. It's like you literally do this in your sleep. I know, I mean, I probably could, I probably have. All right, so wow. there we are. Did yeah. you just see that though? That was like in two seconds. What is the trick to spreading sauce pr appropriately okay. and well? So you want to, I always start in the middle and then I, I circle out like this and I push, um, push the sauce to the sides. This is like a little bit of like hypnosis going on. <laughs> yeah, so take a big handful of the cheese and I will say, I'm gonna give you a little cheese spreading advice here. Okay. You wanna start high and then just kind of sprinkle it all around so you get an even coat, okay? Okay, all right. You're doing great. Okay, yeah, I was looking for affirmation really quick. <laughs> yes, I, you're doing a great job. Can you see that? The pizza gets a few generous dollops of that luscious ricotta. How does this bake off? Well, it actually gets a little bit crispy on top, which makes it so, so delicious. Okay, what's next? All right, so then we're going to put our uh, buffalo cauliflower on top. Oh. Yeah. Okay, tell me about how you prepare the cauliflower. Okay, for sure. So we make our own buffalo sauce here, and we take, um, we break down cauliflower, and we cook the cauliflower in buffalo sauce. How hot is this oven, and how long are we keeping our pizza in there for? So we keep the oven between 500 and 550, um, and it's going to cook for about six, six, six or seven minutes. Okay. Yeah, so super quick. Quick. Yep, and then it'll be nice, crispy, and uh, golden brown on the edges, and that's how you know it's done. The seven minute wait, it felt like eternity. How's it doing in there? Oh, she, oh. she, she beautiful. All right, let's take oh. one more peek at the bottom here. What oh. do you think? I think it looks gorgeous. I think she's What beautiful. do you think? I think I think she's ready. Joy, I've got to document this process. Okay. It's just simply a part of my brand. Okay, do it. All right, you ready? I'm ready. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> that looks so fire. Are you kidding me? I know, right? The pizza is served up in true New York style. You're not eating off of a paper plate. Are you eating pizza? Are you even eating a Are New York you? pizza? No. Amazing slice job. Boom. Come on. <laughs> what do you think? Stop. So good, right? This tastes like real pizza. Yeah. I don't even want to say real pizza. It just tastes, tastes like, like regular pizza. dairy pizza. Yeah. It's so good. It's so delicious. Yeah. What does it mean to you, Joy, to be creating this traditional New York slice that's vegan, that gives so many more people an option? It's awesome. I mean, when people come to New York, when people think about New York, one of the things they, they think about is pizza. You know, they want to check that box off. Oh, I had a New York pizza. So it's really, really awesome that we've given the option to every single person to be able to do that, you know? You know what I also really like uh, to hear is um, people who have dairy allergies or even parents with their children that have dairy allergies and they are always so happy that we exist because otherwise they wouldn't be able to have pizza and like a, such a big part of a kid like childhood is eating pizza, right? Yeah. Yeah. We do a lot of like uh, little kids pizza parties and stuff like that, Ew. you know, it's so <laughs> cute. So, you know, it's like the, the little bit of normalcy. It's like, oh, I can't have dairy, but still have really good pizza. What are some of your favorite reactions from vegans and non-vegans alike who try your pizza for the first time? Like a non-vegan reaction, they are like, oh, it's actually good. And you're like, I told you so. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, we have a lot of people that come in and this is their favorite pizza spot and they are not vegan. If you can't travel to Brooklyn for a screamer's pie, don't worry. I've got your dairy-free cheese cravings covered. Up next, I'm making my super creamy cashew queso. The 
today's biggest political stories with trusted insight and expert analysis. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. One of my favorite things to make when I'm having friends over, if I want a really delicious snack by myself, is my roasted jalapeno queso. You might be wondering, a plant-based version of queso? Are you okay, Sama? But to that I say, I'm perfect. Chile con queso is a Tex-Mex classic that's traditionally made with a great melting cheese and green chilies. We're using cashews as the base and nutritional yeast for a cheesy, savory flavor. And jalapeno, I can't forget about our spice. It's super creamy and cheesy. You won't even miss the dairy. Because I like a little spice in everything that I do, we're adding jalapeno to our queso. I like roasting the jalapeno to get that really smoky, delicious flavor. You've got your jalapeno, drizzle it generously with some olive oil. I like to just rub the jalapeno in the oil just to get it nicely coated. All right, say goodbye to our jalapeno. It's about to get roasted. See you later. The jalapenos roast at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes until lightly charred. Look at our jalapeno. She's cooled. It's blackened on the outside. Also, you'll notice that when you let the jalapeno cool, it's gonna get a little wrinkly, that's totally fine. My secret weapon in creating a really delicious and creamy queso, cashews. I soak them either overnight or flash soak them for an hour in hot water. This allows the cashews to expand. They really get nice and pliable and soft. The first thing I'm gonna do is drain my cashews. Now I'm just gonna add them to my blender. Cashews are in, now I'm just gonna add two cloves of garlic. You might be wondering how I'm gonna make this queso cheesy without the cheese, and to that I say nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is one of my secret weapons in my plant-based repertoire. It's really amazing for creating a savory and cheesy taste to everything you add it to. Beautiful. This is such a super simple recipe, it's actually crazy. Everything's going into a blender. We're gonna add some salt and some freshly ground black pepper. And don't forget our gorgeous jalapeno. Now to help everything come together, I'm just adding a little bit of vegetable broth. You could use water, I just like using veggie broth because it adds some more taste, some more flavor, and we love more flavor when we're cooking, right? Beautiful. Now we get to blend. Are you excited? I'm excited. All right, let's blend. All right, let's check the texture. <gasps> Creamy, velvety, queso-y, not a word, but I have my own dictionary. I don't know if you need that. It's beautiful. My chips have arrived. I'm ready to plate my queso and I'm very excited about it because then I get to eat it. And that's what we're all here for. Check out this texture, okay? <gasps> Are you checking it out? You sure? Creamy, cheesy, but no cream or cheese. Crazy. All right, I want this to look really cute, so I'm just gonna smooth the top out, the back of my spoon, like so. A very simple garnish, just a little bit of pepper. Could you believe it could be that easy? 
cheesy, delicious, creamy queso, no dairy involved. Now I get to eat it. Here I go. Chip ready to take a dip. Hmm. Do you see that? Wow. Ooh, that heat is so good. Mm. This is in my cookbook, so I've obviously made this a bunch of times, but it's so good every time. Queso is perfect to share, so luckily I have my whole crew here. So guys, I don't know what you're doing. Get in here. Come on. That's more like it. <laughs> Teamwork, awesome, love that for us. I hope this showed you can make really creamy, delicious, and cheesy recipes without the dairy. It's amazing. You have to try it. Not to be cheesy, or to be cheesy, I hope this inspired you to try cheese without the dairy because it is just as delicious and versatile. Hey there, and welcome to Today All Day's special Celebrating Hispanic Heritage. I'm Morgan Radford, and over the next half hour, I'll introduce you to some inspirational stories of Latinos blazing a trail in really all parts of society, from big name stars like Jennifer Lopez, to small shop owners and social media influencers. People moving forward in their careers, all while paving the way for others to succeed. First up, life in the fast lane. Daniel Suarez is a 30-year-old NASCAR driver who sped his way into the hearts of fans while making history. This summer, he became the first Mexican-born racer to win a NASCAR official race, and only one of five foreign-born drivers to do so. And he plans to keep chasing that checkered flag. Tom Yamas has his story. Take your time through here. You got no pressure. You're watching NASCAR history about to happen. Number 99 is carving his way through the Sonoma Raceway this past summer, capturing that checkered flag so much more. Daniel Suarez is a NASCAR Cup winner. What was that moment like? It, it was a huge relief because the last five years, it's been a roller coaster for me. To be the first Mexican driver to win a NASCAR Cup Series took more than just good driving. Daniel Suarez. It's not a name you think of when you think of NASCAR, <laughs> right? It's a little different. Definitely not uh, the, the most, you know, common names that you hear, you know, the Enhards, the Elliots, the Petties. It's a little bit different. Like many of the greats, Daniel's love for racing came at an early age in Monterrey, Mexico. At just 10 years old, he began winning go-kart competitions. The older he got, the more he dominated. Always with a dream of racing with the best, NASCAR in the US. But to make the move, he needed money. My father sold his business. My father put a mortgage on my mom's house. Pretty much they risk everything. At 19, he made the move, but Suarez found himself in a new country with a new culture. I was learning the language by myself. I couldn't afford classes. So, you know, watching movies, watching cartoons, reading. You literally learned English in part by watching cartoons. Yeah. Muñequitos. Yeah, muñequitos. <laughs> Even more challenging, when it came to racing, he couldn't communicate with his pit crew. I'm already racing. We're going over 200 miles per hour in some of the racetracks. And I remember back then, I used to think in Spanish and then translate to English. In a sport where every millisecond counts, Daniel was losing time and confidence. I was very close to giving up in this dream in the United States. I was being successful racing in Mexico at the time. And here, I was struggling to run laps. Through a NASCAR diversity program, he was guided on how to thrive in the sport. He overcame the language barriers, and he started to believe in himself. Eventually, I started fighting for championships. Through it all, Daniel has never forgotten Mexico. The Mexican flag always close by. No me muy contenta, la verdad es... Also by his side, his family, his mother, telling us she watches every race. Do you pray before every race? His mother telling me she prays for him not only when he races, but every day from Mexico. And for the driver who couldn't speak English. My name's Danny, bro. Daniel has gone on to animated films, providing the voice of Danny Suarez in Cars 3. 
And now it's clear he's a NASCAR ambassador. It's awesome to see a Mexican driver in this elite group of other talented race drivers and come out here and succeed and win races. You worked very hard, your parents sacrificed, and now you're succeeding. I mean, does it feel like that, that that's the American dream for you? Totally, man. To be a Mexican driver, not just living the American dream in this amazing country, but also breaking a barrier. Maybe that's my purpose. Maybe that's something I have to do. Thanks so much for that, Tom. Next up, life on the road, but in a slower shared lane. I spoke with entrepreneur Raven Hernandez about her company, Earth Rides, one of the first all electric rideshare companies in the country. And I really wanted to know what advice she has for other Latinas entering the tech world. Take a look. 27 year old Raven Hernandez has always been driven. So I heard these things go pretty fast. They do. <laughs> now she's in the driver's seat. It's getting back a little bit of charge. As the founder and CEO of an all electric rideshare company called Earth Rides. When was your first time in an electric vehicle ever, period? Ever that I drove was 2018. Just four years ago. Just four years ago, and now we are showing EVs and highlighting them all over the country. In 2020, Raven took her passion into overdrive. Hi, I'm Raven Hernandez, founder and CEO of Earth Rides. And founded the first rideshare company in the U.S. to offer an all-electric fleet of vehicles. We don't market ourselves as just an eco-friendly company. Mm -hmm. For us, it's really important about the safety and the quality of the rides. The majority of our passengers, they're looking for something better. A lot of people who get started in this space, they have some connection to, to financing or mm. venture capital firms. Did you have any of that? I had hustle. Uh, <laughs> my mother and my grandmother were both single mothers. They uh, taught themselves English. You know, they, they really hustled for everything they had. And I think that grit allows me to be where I'm at today. But you had to sort of open your own doors to get there, it sounds like. It's definitely opening a lot of doors. I mean, it's knocking, right? It's knocking on as many doors as possible and seeing which ones are going to open. And not every room is meant for you. A journey she started as the child of immigrants growing up in Nashville, Tennessee. My family's from Panama uh, in a town called Santiago. You know, it's, it's amazing and it's beautiful just to see how far we've come along in three generations. But like all journeys, this one had its turns. I had no idea this was in my future. I'm a licensed attorney, but along the way, I saw this opportunity to bring clean technology to communities that don't normally see it. Where did you find the drive? I mean, when I think about a hard day at work, I, I know that I, I have it way easier than my mother or my abuela ever did. I mean, my grandmother left her jungle and where she lived at 10 years old to go find work and support her family. And so when I think about getting to be in spaces like this with you, I mean, it's, it's humbling and it, it just makes me uh, fuel my own fire to keep going. A fire that's helped the company expand from its home base in Nashville to three cities, serving more than 300,000 passengers to date. An accomplishment that's even more remarkable given the state of the industry, where women currently make up less than 30% of the clean energy workforce and Latino founders accounted for just over 2% of all venture capital funding last year. A moment ago, you described having to knock on doors and that sometimes the rooms weren't always intended for you. When you got to those rooms, did you see other Latinas or Latinos? Not often, and so getting to be the first Latina in the room as an entrepreneur showing up in this space on behalf of my family and everyone else in the community, it's quite a load, and I always think about that and understand that I'm not the last, right? I might be the first, but I'm definitely not the last. Bringing others on a journey that's just beginning. Focus on what makes you uniquely you. Find strength in what makes you different and then run into that room and knock that door down. So really interestingly, Raven said that she initially funded Earth Rides with her own money, maxing out credit cards just to get it off the ground. And today she's happy to report that the company has raised over $2 million from outside investors. And just after the break, a TikTok star using the platform for good and my conversation with superstar Jennifer Lopez. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight and expert analysis. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. The general election is right around the corner. 
It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about and you'll instantly get voting rules. See the next big deadline, learn how to take action for your plan, and even help others make their plans. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for November. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You'll get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. I love you too. <laughs> Welcome back to Today All Day. Jesus Morales, also known as Juicy on TikTok, is quickly becoming a legend among his more than 2 million followers by giving away hundreds of thousands of dollars in tips to others working towards their own American dream. NBC's Gotti Schwartz has our story. If there's anything more refreshing than a cold paleta on a hot day, le va a dar mil. It's a sight of massive TikTok tips like this going viral for all the right reasons. This is Jesus Morales, aka Juicy on TikTok, the man behind the hands filled with cash, and he searches out unsuspecting street vendors to give them gifts they can hardly believe. What's it like for you when you try to hand somebody a hundred dollars <laughs> and you know they need it, yeah. and they give it back and they're like, no, 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 I can't take it. The Latino community is hardworking and they don't expect handouts. So it's like, it's really weird for it to happen. But again, I always like let them know like, hey, this money comes with a lot of blood. So far, he's given away hundreds of thousands of dollars donated by his followers. My parents came here with nothing, like absolutely nothing besides a dream. And when they first came to the US, they were living, they were sleeping in a basement on a piece of cardboard. And I just like imagine that. And it's just like, dude, like my parents have sacrifice so much just to be here and you know we tagged along on one of jesus's famous surprise taco stand takeovers oh jesus has now told them that he is going to help promote their business they don't know about what's coming afterwards uh but now you're just giving free tacos to everybody free tacos for an hour free tacos tacos gratis gratis come get your free tacos guys free tacos into the, the hour the total bill just over a grant <laughs> they said that and just with what they ate, it was about $50, so they think he's going to be spending a lot of money here. Plus an extra $1,000 tip. Y luego lo demás va a ser una propina para todos ustedes. Muchas gracias. So she just said that the owner of the stand, his son was involved in, in an accident today, uh, was hit by a car, and he's in the hospital, and so they're, they're here working. Uh, but this couldn't have come at, at a better time for this family. How often do you come and and give somebody a tip or do something like this, and then they say, this came at the exact right time. It happens pretty often, to be quite honest, and you know, I'm glad that we're able to help out. It's a reminder every day, you know, everybody goes, everybody, you know, street vendors, regular people, you know, being able to do things like this for them is just, it just means the world to me. And soon he'll set out again, hoping to lift up others, working towards their American dream. For today, Gotti Schwartz, NBC News, Chula Vista, California. Well, I hope that left you smiling. It certainly did for me. Thank you so much, Gotti. And coming up, the story of one woman using her San Diego-based shops to share her Mexican culture, making a positive impact on both sides of the border. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe.
live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks. It's not fun. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Allie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. And welcome back. Alexi de la Parra sells handmade items from Mexico and the U.S. in her San Diego stores. She's not just sharing her culture, but really supporting Latina artisans and building a model of giving back. Chanel Jones has our story. I love getting to go out to these uh, different parts of Mexico, meet with the artesanos, learn about their pieces, and then bring that back and then be able to share that with uh, the customers. Alexia de la Parra has been sharing culture since she was born in the U.S. and grew up just across the border in Tijuana, Mexico, where the colorful markets there were a cornerstone of her childhood. My grandfather would take me, and those are some of my earliest memories of going to Mercado Hidalgo, where we would go try fruits, and we would go walk the stalls, and that's where you would see a lot of folk art throughout the years. Whenever we would travel, we would go to, to markets like this. In 2009, she brought some of those Mexican crafts back with her from vacation. And so I started selling um, at a farmer's market. Pottery, um, jewelry, purses. Alexia soon discovered she had tapped into something special because by the next year, she was ready to open her first business, Art Alexia. Well, I always say, if I don't sell it, then I can keep it at home. So I, I only buy things that I, I really like, and I'm definitely drawn towards color, towards something that automatically just makes me smile. One staple of her business is a pledge to support a wide variety of Latina artisans, like Maria Zacharias from Oaxaca. She makes aprons and does all this embroidery. And we asked her, would you be open to making other items for us? Would you be open to making perhaps patches with this beautiful work or bags? And she was very excited to be able to then do something else because now she can do that for other clients as well. Now she has all this work and she can just buy all her supplies. Last time we spoke to her, she had to buy another sewing machine. Before the pandemic, Alexia also created week-long craft and culinary tours called Eat, Drink, Cook Mexico. I loved being able to share Mexico with people who were afraid to go by themselves or they didn't know the language or they just wanted to go with somebody who was familiar with the area. This year, Alexia expanded her brand, opening sister shop Casa Cocina for all things culinary. So it was nice to start something fresh that's still similar, but has its own identity. Post pandemic, she is once again sharing Mexican art by teaching it at workshops. So one trick I like to do is I like to fold it in half to make sure it's at the halfway point. And giving instruction on how to make a Dia de los Muertos or Day of the Dead altar. 
It's about remembering your loved ones that have passed, keeping their memories alive, sharing their stories, talking to your children about your parents, your great grandparents. Alexia has begun preparing her Day of the Dead altar this year, always to honor her grandfather. Oh my goodness. I have so many memories of him. He passed away when I was extremely young, but I can remember his voice. I always wonder like, oh my God, if he could see me now, like what would he think that, that I'm doing this? I think he'd be super proud for sure. What a beautiful story and really what a beautiful impact. Thanks to our Chanel Jones for that one. Los Angeles is home to the first ever museum dedicated to the tastes, sights, and smells of Mexican cuisine. Gotti Schwartz is back to report on the museum's unique exhibits, including one where an abuelita shares her legendary family recipe for quesadillas in a working kitchen. There are thousands of Mexican restaurants all across the city of Los Angeles, but just one museum where the soul of Mexican cuisine is on full display. So there's looking at history, and then there's, there's tasting history, and those are very different things, right? Yeah, we talk about uh, indigenous ingredients to the Americas, in Mesoamerica. Can you imagine Italy without tomatoes? Tomatoes are indigenous to the Americas. Chiles are indigenous to Mexico. So think of all the other communities, cultures that use those ingredients and claim as their own. At La Plaza Cocina, one of the museum's unique exhibits is Abuelita's Kitchen showcasing 10 local grandmothers and their personal family recipes. Many times people will come from Latin America and they, they leave behind everything. How important are these recipes to preserving history within a family? I think they're really important. The grandchildren, they might not be speaking Spanish anymore and they may never have visited their abuelita's hometown in Mexico, but they know the cuisine, the dishes that their grandmother or their mother has preserved from that heritage. And here in this museum, it's not just exhibits celebrating the rich culture of Mexican cuisine. We are joined by a very special abuelita, Consuelo Perez, and a working kitchen inside of this museum. Consuelo, uh, what are we making today? Uh, we're making quesadillas. Quesadillas. Yes. All right. Yeah. Consuelo says she was raised by her abuelita in Mexico. One day, her grandmother <laughs> went to the market and met a mysterious woman with a secret to share. She says, I give you the recipe for quesadillas, and you can sell it, and you can make uh, uh, money to bring home. When I came here, I brought my grandma, so I took her from work, and then uh, she told me, uh, you know, Mom, uh, she was an angel. So this yes. isn't just a recipe. This is like, yeah. this is a legend. This yeah, is a, a legend. legend. This recipe, her abuelita sold quesadillas and helped support her family, passing it to Consuelo, who now wants to share it with the world. What do you think your abuelita would say if she knew you were sharing her recipe with everyone? Oh, I think um, she's going to be happy. The, this tradition, it came long, uh, more than 60 years ago, you know, it's still alive. I think, she's, uh, I think she's now in the heaven, she's really happy. Moment of truth, here we go. Delicioso. Wow. Curating the flavor of history for generations to come. Gotti Schwartz, Los Angeles. Gotti, that was awesome. We have to thank you for that story, but I'm also going to guess that that probably had to be one of Gotti's favorite assignments. Just after the break, my conversation with Jennifer Lopez on how she's helping other Latina entrepreneurs create their own lasting legacies. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You'll get one beautiful life to live. 
what are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jen doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back and thank you so much for joining us. We all know that Jennifer Lopez is a singer, a dancer, and an actor, and she's also a successful businesswoman. I sat down with her to talk about a new effort that's taking center stage, supporting other Latina entrepreneurs. You know the name Jennifer Lopez. Her music and her movies. Well, now she's sharing her knowledge of Hollywood and the businesses that made her a multi-million dollar star with nearly 400 Latina entrepreneurs trying to change the face and the language of the small business world. We're changing lives. We want to take the Latina entrepreneur, empower them, give them opportunity where there wasn't, um, you know, me growing up the way I did, you know, we weren't even in the conversation in that way. And the opportunity to do something, that's all anybody wants. Nobody wants a handout, but that opportunity can change your life. Which is why Lopez is partnering with nonprofit Grameen and its CEO, Andrea Jung, to deliver a total of $14 billion to Latina entrepreneurs by 2030. Together with their male counterparts, Latina entrepreneurs make up one of the fastest growing groups of small business owners in the country, creating businesses at a rate six times faster than other racial or ethnic groups. But in spite of that, Latinos are 60% less likely than their white peers to get their loans approved by national banks. Latina owned businesses have grown 44% in the last 10 years. Morgan, the capital that is going is paltry and it's unacceptable. They just want to have an equal chance. Why is giving someone the resources to start a business the way to close that gap, to make things a little bit more equitable? Yeah, because we can, we can just be the kind of uh, you know, working in the kitchen, the valet parkers, all this stuff, like the, the traditional kind of things where people think of Latinos in these roles. And the point is, is that we want more than that. We just, we, we have bigger dreams than that. And for me, even in my own business, I was like an artist who was like making billions of dollars for other people and not really even realizing it, just like happy to be in the room. And then started to realize, wait a minute, I can make my own perfume. I can do this in my own way. I should own a part of this business. I remember watching you. I was growing up in Greensboro, North Carolina, and I would see you come across the screen and you were so proud, right? <laughs> and mind you, this is a time when there weren't a lot of roles for Latinos, mm -hmm. and especially in Hollywood, mm -hmm. or they were pigeonholed, right? And you showed up on that stage and said, no, no, no. I'm Jennifer Lopez. This is my name. I'm loud and I'm proud. This is my body. This is who I am, <laughs> yeah, right? And, and you made the world reckon with you and what it meant to be Latina. Why was it so important to you to always have Latinidad, just the, the, the concept of being Latino, front and center? It's just who I was. And I think my mother and my family raised me to be proud of who I was. And so when I went into these worlds like Hollywood, where we were not represented at all, I almost felt like, like, a, like a unicorn. I'm, I'm Latina, I'm Jennifer Lopez from the Bronx. And my parents are Puerto Rican, and I'm Puerto Rican. And I think it made me feel uh, special. Even the whole kind of like body thing was such a thing. It was like, everybody was like size zero models, yeah. tall, blonde, you know, beautiful, a beauty, a certain type of beauty, but there was other types of beauty. There was a narrow window of what There was a narrow window. And I was like, my mother was also beautiful. She had a beautiful, I mean, my dad, you know, and my, my we always talked about their big butts and all that kind of stuff. And I'm not to reduce myself to that because that's what then they tried to do after, right? Because I was so, okay with it. They made fun of me for it. I have to credit my, my parents and my family for making me feel um, like I was worth something and that I didn't have to be anything other than who I was. My grandmother used to make us dresses. And How do you help these women? have the same thing. What do you say <laughs> I to the generation? Every, I try. I don't have any magic uh, kind of formula for 
success. What I've learned is that if you can follow your heart, if you can be true to yourself and you can work really hard, the difference between being successful and not being successful is not giving up. And I just didn't give up. And you're here? And here we are. It was really a lot of fun and such a joy to speak with her about her new important mission supporting those female business owners. Thank you so much for joining us in celebrating Hispanic heritage. And for more stories like the ones you just saw today, tune in to Today All Day. With today's food, joined by one of our favorite chefs, hey, our Bobby Flay. That's right. He's got a new book out next week called Beat Bobby Flay. Conquer the kitchen with 100 plus battle tested oh. recipes. Oh. Yeah, this morning, Bobby's teaching us how to win in the kitchen with one of his all time favorite dishes. Bobby, just when you think you know everything about chili, <laughs> you're going to do something. Is it a secret <laughs> ingredient? Is it like, are you going to add some coffee grinds to it? Or are you going to, what are you doing? You're just taking the meat out? You're robbing us? <laughs> well, I, I, it is a vegetarian dish, but Carson, you have to understand, first of all, on Beat Bobby Flay, I don't get to decide what the signature dish that we're cooking is. It's the other chef. Oh, that's right. So I got challenged to vegetable chili, and also my girlfriend doesn't eat meat, so, you know, I got to adjust. Smart so man. how do you make it, it good? Works. Smart man. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, so come on over. So, um... I'm going to start by making the base of the chili. Every, I always say everything good starts with onions and garlic. So we're going to start with some onions and garlic and then some tomatoes as well. And, of course, you need to bring some spices into the game. And, Bobby, so well, who's like your girlfriend? <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, you buried the lead. I, I, wow. Just kidding. I, I, I knew you were going to go there. Yeah. I knew yeah. you were going to go there. Well, you brought it up. Uh, she will re she's going to rename uh, Nameless for now. Okay. But, but okay. thanks for asking. I'm just going to Google it. Okay. I'll have it by the end of the oh, segment. Wow. Yeah. All right. So the go chili ahead. Went when right you put out the, the meat window. in? Sure did. Nothing remains nameless, Where'd you Bobby. Meet? It's How'd 2021. You How'd you guys meet? <laughs> Anyway, so then you add then you add a dark beer to the, uh, uh -huh. to the chili, which yeah. is one of those secret ingredients, right? And then this becomes the base of it. Now, Carson was asking, like, you know, you rob us of the meat, but you can use things that are veg that are vegetables that actually wow. give us the uh, the texture. Very of the attractive. Meat, meat like. So we're going to <laughs> very we're going to Carson uh, founder. Carson founder on the gonna, internet. We're not I will gonna not say it out loud. Loud. We promise. Very, but very impressive. No, he didn't. He did. No he did. Yeah. Okay. Vegan so or we vegetarian? Have, uh, <laughs> no. Veg you really are dating have... up, Bobby. You are really wow. dating up. You are a lucky wow. man. All right. So anyway, this guy went off the rails. Mix, what what vegetables are you using there, Bobby, to replace the meat? So thank you meat? so much, Al. Thank you so much. So we have uh, we wow. have eggplant and portobello mushrooms Ooh. because they they have that sort of meaty texture. Mm -hmm. We're gonna add that to the to the chili as well, and we're gonna let this cook for a little while. And then basically, what happens is you have the base of the chili, and it mm -hmm. looks and feels like chili. It tastes like chili, but it's completely meatless. And, and then the thing I love about chili is that it becomes like this canvas for all these like really cool garnishes that you can put on top, which is really the key, oh, that's right? A nice so Ooh, that's beautiful. We have some yogurt that uh, has a little bit of uh, uh, shishito peppers in it and some lime juice. Mm. We want that nice cooling effect. And then I have some avocados in here with some um, with some diced red onions mm -hmm. and some chilies. I'm going to put some avocado mm. on top. It's almost like uh, the chili becomes a vehicle for all these cool things that you want to eat. A, little, a, a few tortilla chips with some crunch. Mm. You got to make sure you have that crunch going. Hey, Bobby, does, it, does the chili Mexican take cheese. less time because it's meat-based, I mean, vegetable-based than, yeah. than a meat-based one would? 
It does, Al, because you know if you're cooking something like eggplant or portobello mushrooms, it's going to uh, it's going to cook a lot quicker. You just want to make sure that the mushrooms then the eggplant mm-hmm. cook all the way through because then it absorbs all the flavor from the base of the chili itself. You want to cook at that dark beer. You want to get some of that earthiness as well, and uh, and then you know you, you just you, st- you start to garnish it. A little bit of lime zest on top, so you have some acidity, you have some spiciness, you have a little sweetness, mm. all the good things. And it's a uh, it's a very warming dish. I have to say, like when I first said when I first heard that I had to make vegetable chili mm-hmm. on beef Bobby Flay, I was kind of bummed out because mm-hmm. right. you know I am I am a meat eater, and um, but I have to say like the eggplant and the mushrooms do a great job Ooh. of substituting yeah. it. And of course, it's a little bit healthier. I mean, people are eating a lot more vegetables. I was going to say, are, are plant ba- is plant-based having its moment now, Bobby? Oh, it's unbelievable. You know, as a chef, we constantly have to adjust to, uh, to the trends of the way people are eating. And I will say one thing. People are eating healthier and healthier. And I don't think that's ever going to go in mm-hmm. reverse. I think it's only going to keep going in that direction. Bobby. So we have to really get very comfortable with cooking vegetables in lots of different ways. Yeah. What did your girlfriend say when she tried oh, that first wow. bite? I was just curious. He's trying to help you here. Uh, trying what, to help what, a brother out. So what, what did she say? Who? Um, you know what? I haven't made this for her yet, to be perfectly honest. Oh. But you know, it's it's on the dock. Well, it's been it's been it's been the summer now. Now you know it's getting a little yeah, bit. Yeah, right. Well, is she there right yeah. now? You tell her. Give it step on in. <laughs> no, she's not here. But, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks so much for having me. You're the best. Bobby, we love you so much. This is so fun to tease you. Does she have a key to the elevator? What else is in your book? We have a couple seconds. What other kind of recipes? Are they all vegetarian? Oh, you know, there's all kinds of things, from like piri piri chicken to shrimp and grits. Oh. Um, there's some great desserts like a spiced chocolate pudding, um, eggplant rollatini. I mean, mm. you know, um, Salisbury steak. There's, there's really classic home style dishes. Mm. Cool. And then there's a couple of things in that are a little bit fancier. But it's a, you know, if, if you're a fan of the show, I mean, uh, Al's been on the show a couple of times. Um, it's such a fun show, and um, we've, we've, we've shot over 500 episodes. Jeez. Wow. Cool. And, You've only uh, lost so twice. obviously it's they're amazing. not all in this yeah. book. This is volume one, Our, so oh, hopefully wow. there'll yeah. be more volumes. It's a terrific right. book. Thank you, Bobby. It's a great show. Yeah, it's a great book. Thank, Thank you, Bobby. Bobby. Good luck Bye. with the relationship. You guys are the best. Can't wait <laughs> to see you. Bobby Flay is out next Tuesday. Find out more of the chili recipe with no meat in it. Go to today.com slash boring I think you've learned a valuable lesson, Bobby. There's a new meat Bobby Flay. We're like 13 years old. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. (laughs) Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. A masked killer takes aim and fires. A fatal attraction that leads investigators to turn towards their own. Internal Affairs, a new podcast from Dateline. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Today's biggest political stories with trusted insight and expert analysis. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Okay, guys, we're back with Today Food and another Italian feast. Chef Giada De Laurentiis is here to whip up her zucchini lasagna rolls Mm. and a delicious Italian dessert, I heard. Wow. Yes, and I think you've tasted it. Uh, I, I did. Think I all know you tasted it. When I say it. I heard, I mean it was shoved in my face well, this five minutes my ago. Attention because we don't have the noodles. So this I is the, like the no taste. noodles for this. So. Ricotta filling. Yeah. Right. So you what like I like to do. I like that. It's Thank a you. little. Like it's sort of vegetarian. I just realized you're vegetarian. But it's all I put, good. But I put prosciutto on those. But well, you we can have a version of it. Don't even worry about me, guys. Worry about America. We take care of the guests. Well, you know, because this is a You're great a vegetarian yes. main course or side for the holidays or any time if you don't have prosciutto. Anyway, okay. 
Who is going to try Craig. to Craig. make? Okay. Look after your fingers, though, please. Okay, but maybe no, 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 make come here and do it here because something awful on the air. No, not on the air. Thankfully, I was at home. Goodness. So let's. Okay, put I was using a mandolin. Yeah, no. So you can do this with a mandolin. That's how they got these. Wait, you didn't get anything. I didn't do that right. Did you not do that? That's what it looks like when I shave my face. There we go. There we go. Well, a little thicker. A little thicker. Get in there. Anyway, they come looking like this. Get in there, Craig. There we go. And we're just about out of time, ladies and gentlemen. So you use a vegetable peeler. You make these little thin rolls out of the uh -huh. zucchini. Okay. You take somebody caught that. Now, do you want to get your hands dirty? Yeah, of course, sure. Okay. He's not just a pretty face. Come on now. <laughs> just checking. I got pretty hands too. Okay. <laughs> You're not going to touch the oh, ricotta with your hands. <laughs> You're going to use a spoon. Okay. What okay. Do do? So this is ricotta that yeah. we've already drained. You can add Parmesan cheese. I'd be happy and to all of it. All of it. Go. Let's go. Okay. I like my cheese. Let's go. Yes, you okay. Do. I love that. Then we're going to add spinach and, and egg? egg and prosciutto. Oh, so, okay. this... so you're basically, I'm just dumping things for you. Correct. Okay, it's my pleasure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're welcome. I'm making it easy. Okay, so for okay. you, you'd leave out the prosciutto. Don't mix worry. it all together. America, America. There we go. Mix, mix, and then mix. it looks like this. I know, we're like, okay. Oh, great. Didn't I do a good job? Thank you. Yep, you did a really like, great job. We'll try it. Go ahead. Okay, but wait, I want I want you to try to do this. Oh, okay. God. Oh, no. I was come making on. fun of Craig, and now you're making me do it? Okay, oh, ready? this is good. But wait, we're only three minutes left, so I'm going to run out of time. I'm not going to make you do it. Go. You can oh make on yeah. one end, yeah. on one end, and then roll it. And it's that's kind of it's, it's, it's kind of a little bit because there's zucchini. Yeah. There we so go. then roll it. Okay. Oh like gosh. a little jelly roll. Okay. Roll, 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 roll it, yep. roll it. And it's okay if it's not a perfect slice. with the slice. family. You like, like that? Easy. Yeah. And then you put it right in here. I'd be happy to. So, you so just we put a bit of sauce on the bottom. Yeah, we put a little bit of marinara on the bottom. That's mine. Don't steal mine. No, no, that's yours. And then you put them all, and you want to give them a little room, you guys. Don't don't bump them up against each other because zucchini has a lot of water. So when you put it in the oven, it gets too wet. So you want to leave some. Space. So, kind of okay. like this, as you okay. can see, you put another cup of sauce over the top, like this. Oh my God. So good. Okay. Just like that. Another this cup or so of pre made um, jarred marinara. Okay. This is amazing. This is actually one of the And a little bit of. Yeah, look. And a little mozzarella right on Oops. top. And it's different. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Oh, just, it was the bad chef that did it to me. This is really And the good. prosciutto. Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, okay, so that's easy enough. 450? Can't beat it. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Oh, no. I want to make sure we get to the ooey gooey chocolate okay. cake. Oh, yes. Me too. For sure. Yeah. Okay. okay, so butter and sugar in here. Okay. Amaretti cookies. Now, really? they didn't leave any hole Amaretti. for you to see. Amaretti. They're almond cookies in oh. Italy. Okay. We have them with coffee, with oh, breakfast, the best. and we grind them up. Oh, you know them. I've got Italian wife. Oh, oh well, well, you didn't you tell me that Sorry. earlier. Very okay, <laughs> exactly. So you can buy these in many different places, um, as well as. My e commerce site, okay. oh. jodzy.com. Jodzy which you just learned about. I did just Okay, about so it. then you add the cookies and the almonds has right full in here. Restaurants? I told you, Vegas faces everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> she's anyway. Like a, she's, like an she's like looking over me when I was in Vegas. <laughs> cookies okay. and all. Sorry. <laughs> Watching over you. Yeah, there um, you go. A little lemon zest okay. and Ooh. four eggs. Okay. There we go. Okay. A lot of eggs today. I love eggs. What well, is chocolate coming up? Eggs, about? eggs. Right now. Do you want to do it? <laughs> No. Why not? Because I'm not good at these things. Of course you are. Okay, Watch Chanel. Just yeah, melt a chocolate such right in pressure, there. That is how you pour it. chocolate. Look, you pulse it all together. This is what okay. it looks like. Into right. a and you food pour processor. It. Pour it all together. Yeah, Craig. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't do that. So anyway, it sat for a minute, so it's more like mousse now. Okay. Um, but you put it in a springform pan. And what I love about these springform pans is you can click them open after you bake. Oh, so it's really good. I could never figure those things out. Yeah. And then you just put it in here and you bake it at 350 for 35 minutes. You always make it look so easy. There we go. All right, here we go. Well, it is if all the work's done ahead That's of time. That's true. But anyhow, true. and then, okay. Craig, why don't you add a little bit more cocoa powder on top? Just, 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 yeah, just as a just finishing. Just... Give a little and tap, then tap. a little bit of orange zest over it. Look at that. Mm. Tap, You've tap. learned it's like yeah, Sugar McGavin said. You taste the orange. Tap, 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 tap yeah, it in. Just tap, tap, oh. tap, tap. It's nice and light that way. Okay. Okay. And then a little zest. orange zest oh, on orange? top. This yes, is delightful. Yeah, it's good. And then a little whipped cream. Mm. Gluten free. Gluten free. I think it it's great. And it's a great way to use these cookies. These are fantastic. Which I just love. How is it you never run out of recipes? Like, I mean, you're just, you're just endless. <laughs> because that's what I do. And now I'm traveling tonight to Italy to get because more recipes. Because she's got a website. Really? You can go on her website. You know what other website oh you want to get her recipes? Go <laughs> to today.com. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now.
Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now to a one-pot meal that checks off the three C's. Cozy, cheesy, comfort. Okay, those are my three favorite C's, which is exactly what we're looking for in fall, and our friend, Chef Alex Guanacelli, is here to make it happen. Yeah. I like how I said that. How do you say it? How do you say it? I just say guanacelli. My father would say guanacelli, and I just say guanacelli. I said guanacelli. I like it. She's the co-host of Food Network's The Kitchen, and they've got a special Friendsgiving episode airing this week. You have such a great crew on that show, I by the it. way, right? Are you so happy? I cannot stop laughing. Literally, the director's like, please, stop. please. I can't get the shot. How much I fun is that? I, 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 it's like being in a kitchen with a different type of family, and I yeah. need it. Because you, yeah. you like your other peeps like sometimes more than your actual <laughs> yeah, family. Yes, exactly. We kind of feel that way about you yeah. because you're here to cook us something by the way comfort love. food is our shepherd's favorite shepherd's pie, pie. who has yeah. only been eating shepherd's pie for the last three days so this is perfect i heard that i heard that about you now this is classically <laughs> made with lamb it's made with lamb and potatoes on top yeah. it's, it, but okay. we're doing it with potatoes and beef because yeah, yeah. why not you know what i'm saying you could do it with we chicken or do turkey. it you, yeah you decide you could go vegan and make well she is vegan. she is vegan <laughs> but she can have the potatoes <laughs> Yeah, so I just ate broccoli for one day. What, yeah. you, what about last night? Did you have any meat? Did you have meat last I had night? Two bites. Oh, I love this. It's like, over. Are you two on the phone with each other? Like, what did you just eat? So, so <laughs> let, let's make something. Okay. Let's make something that you can't eat, and okay. then we'll talk about how <laughs> you cook. No, she can eat it. She can eat the potatoes. Okay, perfect. So let's start with potatoes. Potatoes in water, salt, and then when they're. Yeah. Would you like me to do this? Yeah, get in there. Okay. Is this and then, sweet? yeah, and then we rice them once they're rice cooked, them. You drain and rice. And you can overcook potatoes for mash. It's you okay. don't want to get super this mushy. Just like tender. Garlic Look at this. Huge. Let's see it. Let's see how satisfying that's going to be when it squeezes through. And it it's matches like, your oh. outfit. I mean, this is just oh. all in one. And look at that. Look wow. at that rice job. Oh. 12 out of 10. Oh, that's cool. That's satisfying. My God. Isn't I've it? never seen one this big. And Do you, you could rice for Christmas? Any, <laughs> and you could rice any vegetables like this. So then we move on once we're excited about the oh, ricer. Jeez. We, people. We, we, just some, did, we just did an infomercial for our ricer. <laughs> okay, so here's the potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, I feel like we're at a sleepover. Is there milk? milk? Sour cream, butter, potatoes, mix. Okay. Now mix. you could sub in coconut milk. Okay. Oh, we'll do that for Hoda. <laughs> and Let's coconut oil, and you could do a mashed potato. She, actually, it's so funny that you brought this. Do you know her obsession with anything coconut? No, I didn't. I she genuinely didn't. She usually likes didn't. to put this on her skin. <laughs> All right, let's continue. Okay. So we, now we've got to make the rest of the pie. I love this. So Come. over here, we, yeah, right, this on? is where we cook the beef, took it out. Oh, oh, you can add it. all those vegetables. Oh, okay, you got and it. And this is the base of the shepherd's pie. Look, this okay. is actually where the two worlds meet. You're doing the mashed potato. Oh, smell that. Perfect. Smell that. Is that rosemary? It's fresh thyme thrown in there and we just let that kind of crackle and fry and mm. soften we get oh, a little this, salt in there oh, this i mean is what I, this, this looks this, like look what's happening mix it in there oh, with look. the peas mm. stock and a little red wine vinegar for a little acidity okay is Wait. this why you rice this because it makes it so smooth exactly and then Alex, you don't get the are lumps these cooked peas that yeah they're in? they're frozen Oh, for, We're going I leave frozen. Them in, so I just frozen. leave them, I put them in frozen? Yeah. Well, you defrost and drain and throw them in throw stock. Them in. stock. Little red wine vinegar. Red and wine these vinegar. are the two halves of the Look shepherd's at us pie. Both. Look at this. Wait, I'm doing nothing. Looking. 
By the way, I'm going to leave because you two have this. Okay, so now you mix all this up and then what? And oh, then look, we come, come over come. here come. and here's your mix that you just made. Okay. Yum. A layer of mash with cheese on the oh, bottom. Look at this. Wow. The meat on the top, right on top, like a little mashed potato mm -hmm. and cheese sandwich. And then you take more mash and, and put it on top. all the mash oh. and cheese goes on top. Mm. And that's our little like mashed potato sandwich. Oh. And by the way, in my house growing up, lasagna was an appetizer for Thanksgiving, just what? to give you some wait, idea. What? Oh wait, I might try that this year. What so, are you doing for Thanksgiving? I always cook a ton of stuff, but if you need a break from leftovers, a comfort meal like mm -hmm. this in the freezer yes. that you introduce in between all your Thanksgiving leftovers can I'm kind so of be like... We like your portion sizes. Yeah, that's look, for one look at by this. the pool in your you bikini. Just, can I have a fork. Yeah. <laughs> Here, I love this. Yeah, okay, there you go. Ready? All right, we're going to try it. And there we have it. Oh my God, the top the, looks I so I know. Crunchy. And then you broil that in the mm -hmm. oven. At, mm. yeah. Oh my God. Bury my mashed potatoes. I, mean, like I love your mashed potatoes. Here. I love them. That's what's to say. Exactly. And if oh you want to get this recipe, which you should, all you have to do is go to today.com. That's like chemical. That's like a chemical high right now on that. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. I love you too. <laughs> Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. A masked killer takes aim and fires. A fatal attraction that leads investigators to turn towards their own. Internal Affairs, a new podcast from Dateline. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Okay, it's still pretty early in the school year, but you may already be running out of lunch ideas for your kids. Have no fear. Winnie Hayes is here. The Atlanta mom has nearly 300,000 loyal Instagram followers checking out her cute, fun lunchbox ideas and recipes, and today she's going to share them with us. I mean, this looks a little intimidating yes. for some of us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we're kicking off a soup season with some chicken pot pie soup. Uh, chicken pot pie soup. And yes. can you put this in their, like, lunchbox? Of box? course. You and make it for mix? dinner. You in make it for dinner. Oh, this is their and dinner. Okay, yeah. we'll make their dinner so first, then we'll make their lunch. You know. Okay. So here we have some oil and butter. Mm -hmm. We use a combination of oil and butter so that the mm -hmm. butter doesn't burn, and we're okay. going to add oh, is some. is that what oh. keeps the butter from burning? Oh. Yes. So here we have carrots, celery. You chopped and, it all yes, up. Yes, chopped it all mm -hmm. up. Chop it so that they kind of hide it, right? Exactly, mm. yeah. Okay. Just great flavor. All right, and now we're going to add some garlic. Oh, so oh, wow. lots a lot of, of garlic. A lot of minced garlic. We okay. love garlic or, around it's here. Good for, and it's also good for kids, right? Yes. Or, and okay. it makes it tasty. A little, add a little, you know, don't be shy with the salt, salt and, and pepper. pepper. Do your kids like that. spicy? Or are you they, adding more they butter? Do. We, of course. Wow. We're going to make a well in the middle and melt the butter. Oh, sorry. Ooh, no, I like that. Yeah. That so we're basically yummy. making a roux. And now okay. we're going to add the flour. Oh, to oh, so that you butter. think it's all in so one pot? All in, all in one pot. Okay. We, can't, we don't like um, washing dishes around yeah, here. So. Okay. <laughs> all right. So once you um, mm -hmm. add the flour in here, you're going to mm -hmm. cook it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then here we have milk and broth. What kind Wait, of this it's is milk, milk and broth, milk and broth. together? Yes, mixed. together. Yes. What so. kind of milk do you use? Whole milk. Okay. Yeah, whole milk. But you can use pretty and, much and whatever is it milk like you want. Like fifty fifty. Yes, broth, fifty fifty, just okay. about. And we cook the chicken in there to give it more flavor. Actually, okay. so, so the chicken pieces yes. are in there. Okay. And now we're going to add Pot some russet potatoes. Yeah. Potatoes. And if you like sweet potatoes, add sweet potatoes yeah. in there. Oh, and then what about some thyme? Are yeah. these frozen peas? They are frozen oh, peas. Put those in. Not yet. We're gonna dice up the chicken. Okay. Here we're gonna just okay. do a little quick dice here, just, okay, just bite cubes. size pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And then we're going to add this chicken okay. into the pot, to do it. Okay. along with the sweet peas. 
Okay. So you add the piece at the very end? Yes, yeah, just to warm it through. Okay. okay. Give it a quick stir. Because if it's frozen, this may sound silly, but if it's frozen peas, they've already been cooked. Exactly. Okay. We just need to warm it through. It Is it delicious? <laughs> so good. And then we're going to remove the thyme uh, when you get ready to eat it. Look what she did. She, she put some parsley. <laughs> if you put it in a the thermos, does it stay warm all day? Yes, for about wow. four to six hours. Yes. Mm. Oh my God, this is so yummy. Yes, I'm so glad you oh love it. Oh my God. It. Okay, let's go back and make the other all part right. of the lunch. So here we are going to make some I'm taking my soup turkey and cheese pinwheels. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here we have some room temperature cream cheese, mm -hmm. a little bit of mayo. Uh huh. Mayo and cream mayo cheese. Mayo. Oh, you combine them together. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And here we have some garlic powder, mm -hmm. onion powder, salt and pepper. Okay, mix all that mm -hmm. in. Oh. All right, good enough. <laughs> Yeah. I just smush it all in together. Smush it all together. Okay. Here we have it right here. Okay. And now we're just going to build our little tortillas here. Okay. Tortilla right in the middle. Okay. So we're going to just spread a little bit. Don't go all the way to yeah, the edge. Where do you put it? Oh, in the middle? Just straight up in the middle. Okay. Oh. And if your kids just like cream cheese, you could just keep just it. Do whatever cream they cheese, like. Whatever okay. they like. And now we're going to add a little bit of turkey. And if you don't like turkey, wow. you can or use ham. Or do you leave it rolled up? Oh, I left mine rolled, but oh, I do sure. what you do. do whatever. You do. <laughs> it works whatever. out in the like Okay. A little bit of cheese. Mm hmm and spinach. Yes, and spinach, or if you can use any type of greens that you like, any type of cheese then you that you roll like. roll it up. And we're just gonna roll it up super tightly oh, you do like it that. tight. Yes, do it tightly just then, like that. And then how do you make it so it doesn't all come unrolled? You hold it tight, yeah. and then you cut it, and then you just cut, yes, and we're gonna cut, cut the it right pieces. There. Oh, and yeah. look how you put them right there. That's yeah. good. So you can cut it into like this little pinwheel yeah. rolls, Those or are cute. you can just cut it in half. Okay. I'll show you. Just cut it in half. Look at that. Oh, and, and then put the two there halves you have in. It. Yeah. Oh, that's so Just cute. And look, I can't handle your lunchbox. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. What's going on here? So here we have some crackers. This looks we have so some cute. grapes and cheese, mm -hmm. cucumber, strawberries, and of course the pinwheels. And you know, you need a little bit of chocolate. So right? you put a little sweeten in for your kids. Always put a little, little bit of sweetness. <laughs> that <laughs> pinwheel is delicious. Yeah. I want it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for me. And we are back with today food and the wonderful Valerie Bertinelli. That's right. She has been coming into our homes for years, one way or another. Yeah. Actress. You can't get rid of me. Yeah. <laughs> she won two Golden Globes for her role on One Day at a Time. Who could forget that? She made us laugh out loud and hot in Cleveland, too. And now, Valerie, you host like a thousand cooking shows and food <laughs> yeah. shows. Only two. Food Network, they're so good. Family Food Showdown's awesome, too. This morning, you're going to give us a, a chicken dish. But it's know, the right weather for a chicken dish, I think, especially a chicken bake. I wish people could smell how good it, it really smells in here. It smells great. Now, where does your love of cooking come from? Before it's, acting? It, oh, yeah. I mean, I've you've been, been acting cooking, your whole life. I've been, no, I've been cooking longer than I've been acting, actually. From, I've really? been acting since I was 12, and I've been cooking since I was a little... Why? Was it in your family? Or? Yeah, my nonny, my mother, and then I find out my great-grandmother was, was an actual chef in San Remo, so I, it's in my blood. Yeah. It's meant to be. So I'm going to show you this dish because it's really super delicious and it's really great for this time of year. Yep. There's a lot of ingredients. There's a lot of ingredients, so I would suggest making a lot of it because I think a great home tip is when you're cooking and you're going through all the trouble anyway, just make more. Yeah. And then you yeah. have leftovers. I'm one of those fans of leftovers. Me too. So I got a little olive oil in here. Here's a great little trick, too. When you're going to marinate any kind of meat, get a baggie out and get it in a bowl, and it's going to hold everything in there for you. I have some white wine. You want? Yeah, I, yep. I know. I've already, I've already <laughs> partaken. You want? Exactly. Your, you know what, us. Here, I'll leave you a little. Yeah, What's your you. cut of chicken, Valerie? What is that? Is that those breasts? Or? These are chicken thighs. Thighs. Oh. Like the thighs. And I really breast love... If I you want it. I mean, you can I, absolutely do breasts if you want, but I'm telling you, don't be afraid of a chicken thigh. It's so tasty. It's got so much more flavor than a breast. I mean, there are some breast men out there, but I'm a, I happen to be a thigh girl. <laughs> I am too. Why not both? <laughs> I have some fresh thyme. Yep. I've got fresh onion. That's and white wine. Does it matter what kind of white wine you use? Yes, use white wine. You, well, you can use salt or you can use Cabernet, depending. Okay. But I do suggest use the any cheap wine. Stuff you have at no. no, use the good stuff. Why? I'm going to drink the good stuff. No, you're going to drink the good stuff, and you're going to put it because you're going to taste it in your meal. Yeah. Okay. okay. I thought all you that always off. want the good stuff in everything. How long are you going to marinate this? I'm going to marinate this for about two hours. Now, this is not a brine, right? No. This is a marinade. No, well, there is some lemon juice in here. So that'll help. So marinate. that's going to be, that's why you don't want to marinate it more than the two I like how you little red pe pepper flakes Red in pepper there. flakes. So you know what, you guys, I'm going through this really quickly, but you can go online and. Yes. And you're, you guys will have the recipe. And so. they're putting graphics, so hopefully people okay, will good. know what they're doing. So now you know. just massage your chicken breasts. Yes. Or your thighs. These yes. are thighs. So massage thighs or breasts, whatever. How are the tests? The eaters over there. Bibby. What do you think? Oh, my God. Great, right? Oh. You're already eating it. I love it. Well, let's get on. How long do I marinate? You're going to marinate that two hours, no more than two or three hours. Here's a leek. Now, what you want to do with leeks, because they can get really um, 
I'm not going to say dirty, but sand. they do get a lot. They do get a lot of sand oh, in them. Gritty. So you want to you want to get them in some cold water okay. and let them come apart. And then once they've been in the cold water for a while, mm -hmm. yeah. you got your leeks right here. Okay. Then you yeah. add some potatoes, mm -hmm. yeah. little ones. If and then you add some of your red onion mm -hmm. right over. Simple. And then more, more olive, olive oil. oil. Yeah. Yeah. And then you get this into the oven at about 425 for. It'll say on the graphic. Yeah. So you get that in the oven. We want these nice and full tender. Yes, okay. So while that's happening, you're going to bring your chicken out. Yes. And you're going to let it come to room temperature. But you want to get all of those beautiful juices that oh, you just you made. Strained it. You're yeah. keep you them. strained it because you're going to make that into your sauce. Okay. Mm. But you want to keep I would have thrown that out because it was in raw chicken. I would have known that the But you're going to cook it, so it's going to be okay. okay. Good. So oh. you're very right. You don't want to ever eat something with, that's been on raw chicken without Unless cooking you cook it, first. it off. Yeah. You got to cook it off. Yeah. And you want to save these really yummy bits too. And then once you do, you're going to salt and pepper these guys. Mm -hmm. yep. I'm not going to get to that. I don't have to. That's okay. We and you it. want to saute these. Oh, I didn't put it up high enough. Mm -hmm. That's right. But that'll well, be so sizzling. When you're home, you want down. that sizzling. And you want to really get two or three minutes on each side. Okay. You don't have to worry about cooking it all the way through. Because you're, that's going to go back you're in the oven. You're going to bake this whole thing oh. off anyway. You're going to bake it all off again. Okay. There's a lot of steps here. There's a lot of steps, but I'm, it's so worth it worth because it. when yeah. you put all that into oh. it, you can really taste it. Yeah. Those breadcrumbs at the end of those. There's our breadcrumbs at the end. Well, so later. all these Sarah. bits, well, you, oh, you saute them with some Try butter. Mm -hmm. And you get them nice and crispy. Mm -hmm. And then you, you want to then get some mm -hmm. mustard over these guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Put the breadcrumbs back on. And by the end, you're going to have this beautiful dish. Oh, my gosh. Valerie. And it's super delicious. Spectacular. It really is. Is it's worth oh, you're every eating good. Step. It's so good. <laughs> I do. Try the potatoes. They're crazy. Why well, I feel like everybody else's chicken is better than my chicken. Mm -hmm. Like everywhere else I go. Really? Yes, I, this chicken's hard for me. Chicken is probably this the easiest so protein delicious. in the world to cook. <laughs> no, but you cooked it twice and it's delicious. Well, it's and you inside, want to, but you want to make sure you get the crisp on the, on the mm, skin. Yeah. Mine's it's rubbery all... and crabby. Yeah. Valerie, thank you so much. You're going to come back in the fourth hour. I'm right? going to come back. Yeah. yeah. Right, so you can find all these recipes at today.com slash really Be sure to check out Thanks the series well. premiere of Family <laughs> Food <laughs> Showdown. <laughs>Good Friday morning. A search for answers underway this morning. Yeah, another city left reeling from gun violence. It's October 14th. This is today. Deadly spree, a mass shooting rocks North Carolina's capital. At least five people killed.